What's up, guys? Monday night, 9 p.m. Here we go. A little stressful tonight. I had a little technical difficulties with StreamYard. Didn't want to cooperate with some uploads. Anyway, ah, here we are. We're live. Thank you, finally. Uh, tonight, it's going to be a good night. Uh, before I get into it, though, uh, well, I guess I should say this is the Myco Geeky podcast, the podcast that goes deep so you can level up your at home mycology game. I'm your host, Myco Geeky, and uh, I don't know if you guys can see right there. We got a new addition to the set, guys. Uh, one of my buddies on uh, my Discord is a uh, tradesman and a true artisan when it comes to plaster sculpture. Uh, he typically gets hired to do super rich people's like ornate ceilings and, and all that kind of stuff, but uh, he was uh, kind enough to, after working all day, come home and, and work on the, the old rainbow ghost here. Right there. Let me get out of frame so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. Anyway, I was pretty touched. I, I, I know how much work he, he put into it, a lot of work. And uh, shout out to uh, Madam Mosh Kaz and Royce from uh, Discord for getting the idea rolling. And a bunch of my mods and everything helped out and chipped in uh, to, to help make that possible uh, for the podcast. I really appreciate you guys a lot. Uh, now, here we go. So I'm going to tell you guys a little story first. So back in the day, I used to hang out on the Limitless Discord quite a bit, and uh, every once in a while, this guy Ray would show up with some pictures that just made you absolutely jealous. And you're like, who the heck is this guy, and how is he growing these mushrooms? They look amazing. He was always doing something new. He always had new isolation, a new cross. Um, but, you know, he was elusive. He would just pop in, in and out just to, just to show off, just to let everybody know they needed to keep working because they, they hadn't got it all figured out yet. So, uh, flash forward to now. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk to him. I'm talking about Raymond Medici, otherwise known as Uncle Jay. Um, and uh, we've already talked to his wife, Maya, uh, on the High Phase Not Husband uh, podcast. But let me go ahead and bring these guys on. Tonight we're going to talk about what they're all about. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? Nice to have you. Nice to be here. I, I'm jealous. I'm sitting in a cold, sterile lab, and you guys are just... It looks like you're just laying in a bed of uh, lovely gills, just lightly yeah. frosted with psilocybin. That's great. We just have this giant pile of Omni that we're just snuggling on right now. So, yeah. you know, no big deal. This is I mean, cool. Omni is a lover. It's true. So, I get it. Definitely. Yeah. It's, it's very brutal. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, thank you guys for being here. Um, you guys are the, the first uh, power, micro power couple we've had on who, who are going to sit down together and talk about um, what you guys are doing with your cultivation practice, and then beyond that, what you guys are really doing this for. So I'm just going to give you guys the floor and uh, zip my mouth shut and let you guys talk for a little bit. Awesome. Thank you very much for having us on. We we're super stoked about this. Um, we just got a hold of you a couple of days ago or something, I, I believe, and said, hey, you know, we're down. We're down for a spot. So. <clears throat> Here we are, and uh, we have some really awesome stuff to share with everyone. We have been working on a couple of different companies the past couple of years that we have been exploring uh, mushroom cultivation, and we have been investing a lot of time in figuring out different ways of being able to make really great Cubenzies crosses and also uh, purchasing some equipment and moving towards doing um, serial, serial dilution and single spore isolations to be able to possibly do some awesome um, psilocybe natal lenses crosses yep. with cubenzies and other mushrooms like everyone else is kind of That is the fad right now, dude. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. very popular. And um, we had thought about this uh, quite a while ago. We didn't make any moves to work with that specifically. But um, last year, I was working on a 
Omni times albino chode wave that we uh, made available recently that we call Chamalma. Um, to name Wait, that say that one a, again? It's Chamalma. It's, Chimalma. it's uh, named after Aztec goddess. We came okay. up with this idea to we're going to make a line of uh, crosses from a bunch of different stuff that we've worked on for um, a few years. And then everything's going to be um, crossed with chode wave. So every single really awesome heavy hitter that you can think of and um, every single super potent Cubenzi's isolation you can think of, we're going to eventually cross with albino chode wave. Um, and um, and we're going to name them after female goddesses. We're going to name them after uh, different yes. goddesses. Yeah. So that was our plan with that. Um, and then the companies that we've been working on are uh, Medici Mycology, which is our um, at-home cultivation education company. And we offer different types of customized um, online mycology workshops. And then we also offer um, in-person custom mycology workshops. Um, nice. There's different levels of that for different levels of interest. Um, some people want to work with a lot of pre-made materials and right. don't have a lot of time and or are possibly, um, you know, uh, uh, physically disabled or have uh, something that's preventing them from going all the way, you know, and that's, that's right. fine with us. We would like to create a um, relationship and a level of interaction for everyone that's interested because we think that um, having a healthy relationship with mushrooms and plants is very vital to people's mental and emotional well-being. Um, it allows you to connect with yourself and allows you to connect with the earth and other people in ways that are priceless. Um, agree. And so agree to it, agree on that one. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a beautiful yeah. thing. It just brings people to so many wonderful places and allows yeah. people to experience themselves in a really amazing way that allows people to optimize their um, life and their skills and and then, you know, share that with other people and, and bring other people to this higher quality of life and this healthier emotional um, and mental um, capacity. You know, um, mushrooms and different types of entheogenic plants really um, help people increase their emotional and mental health and then even give them um, um, increased mental agility and help them repair trauma right. in the brain and, you know, regrow brain cells from uh, different things that happen to you. It could be emotional trauma. It could be uh, physical trauma like brain damage and different types of uh, um um, psychological diseases that right. um, are, you know, uh, really painful to have to live with and to be able to connect with people and give people lots of different options of this interaction is right. what we are trying to be all about. And we are working on a video series for a website that we have been working on for about a year now. And awesome. we're like two or three videos away from finishing this um, video series. It's going to be a um, uh, full spectrum cultivation education uh, workshop series. And so we will um, go from making our own agar or and or um, inoculating our own agar, uh, depending on, you know, what version people want. There'll be, there'll be like a really basic one and then there'll be an intermediate and then there'll be a really advanced version. And right. then awesome. um, all of this will be available through a subscription, basically. You won't be paying for just a uh, video series. Uh, with the subscription, there will be um, a email list where we will inform um, uh, clients and, and members um, that we will be doing um, live workshops in different areas, different places locally. And then we will have online live workshops that will have a certain amount of people that can check in each time, obviously. But there will be multiple workshops per week that we do lives for. And then every single time we do a live, we're going to be working on new stuff that we're currently working on 
and sharing it with everybody. That's going to cool. include different types of grow alongs. And then um, members will get new um, batches of genetics from us um, as we come out with them and decide that they are ready to be shared with the community. So basically, and I was just talking to somebody the other day about this, I said, when you first get going, you kind, everybody kind of should just find a guru. Find somebody to listen to and follow their methodology, especially if it's a fairly simple methodology. Because if you, out of the gate, watch every YouTube video and scour shroomery and just get too many ideas in your head, you're trying too many things out of the gate and you're not, you just, if things go wrong, you just where to begin. Who knows what, what the cause was, right? Because you don't have, um, you just, you got too much going on. It, and gets so, over, it gets over stimulating all the yes, information sometimes. And it's yes. kind of hard. Like, um, I have a couple of people that come to me and they're like, oh, this is like really kind of confusing. Like, I don't know how to yes. necessarily start this. There's just so much information out there. Um, so, yes. yeah, it's nice to kind of sometimes just have like a streamline of someone that you follow. For sure. 100%. And so I just want to say there are a lot of gurus out there. And I, for whatever reason, I think our community likes gurus. There are communities that want nothing to do with gurus. And I'm here to tell everybody uh, watching the podcast, uh, Ray and Maya are benign, loving, kind gurus who, if you got so lucky to find early on and follow, you would be doing yourself a great service. Because I, as I said before, Ray is still literally one of the most impressive growers I have come across since being in the community. Uh, you guys could do a whole lot worse. So if you guys like what these guys are about, uh, be sure to check out their website. It's linked in the description. Um, you, you can reach out to them on Instagram. Um, and, yeah, the website get, we have the website we have in the description is actually just like a landing page where you can right. get in contact with us and like our current spore menu and stuff. But um, I'm where I guess we are. I've been doing a lot of work on the the working on the website and stuff, and um, nice that will be coming out hopefully by the end of the month. So I hear you, dude. <laughs> I got yeah. my <laughs> list of, of all the things to get done. Yes, it's, yeah. yes, I hear you. We've been now, projecting. Um, I, I actually retired from my current career. Um, okay. I worked at a, a seafood company for like 10 or 11 years um, as a dive control specialist. And Ooh. I just retired from that on December 16th. And I am doing mycology workshops full time and meeting with Amazing. people and talking with people about mycology. So now you guys are, you've, you've used some terminology that we haven't heard, I don't think heard anybody talk about yet. And that's that you are doing local outreach, that you are yeah. actually educating people in your area, which is pretty cool. You guys want to talk a little bit about that and what motivated you to get into doing that? We would love to share about that. Um, we have some really great friends locally that we um, experience mushroom medicine and earth medicine with. And then the beginning of those relationships were they were interested in growing. And so we talked about stuff. We experienced some different types of mushrooms together. And then we got them set up so that they could grow. And then okay. we did workshops with them for a couple of weeks and got them to a place where they didn't need our help anymore and they could do their own thing. And mm -hmm. that's kind of our goal all around is to – is to we we make ourselves available for people to enjoy and experience but if you just need a little bit of help then we're cool with you right. just need a little bit of help you know we're not trying to sell ourselves a whole bunch we have a lot going on um we are offering lots of really high quality products all the time we have a really great spore list um maya has a uh, apothecary company that she's been working on um, for a while and that's been doing really well and so this is just another thing that we really wanted to share with people and if we make a little bit of money that's cool but um, we're really into creating more teachers and putting people in a um, 
evolutionary space so where they can learn something really efficiently from someone who has done lots of research for several years and has spent a lot of time geeking out and, and really analyzing things and really um, learning how to connect and be intimate with mushrooms and um, build a really healthy relationship with them. And then we're bringing that knowledge to you so that you can utilize it really easily and we set you up to where when you're done with a um, cultivation workshop course with us, you can teach other people how to do it. That's how good at it you will be. There will be no right. um, you looking for more help and you endlessly searching and searching and still trying to find the best way to do things. You will be in a place where you will no longer need outside help to grow any type of mushroom you want to grow. And we have took the time to also learn how to grow gourmets and different types of medicinal mushrooms that take a little bit more effort and are a little bit more complicated. And we love it. And we are doing this because our hearts are full of love for everyone and we want to share this knowledge so people can share it with their loved ones. Yeah. And, you know, we're, 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 we're paying it for, we're given these beautiful gifts of knowledge and this experience so that other people can do the same. And we also just really want Love people it. to like learn how to like grow their own medicine too. So then that way they can, I mean, we really enjoy um, being able to put our energy into our own um, things that we are doing and that we are um, interacting with and stuff like that. And so we really want people to be able to um, have that kind of um, that interaction with their own medicine because the energy that you get from putting into your medicine comes back to you when you are couldn't agree um, more. you know and tenfold too right because the mushrooms have their own energy yeah. too and stuff so um that's a big important role just for everyone's soul health in general that that's something i've noticed from um cultivating is there's this immense amount of soul health that you um yeah end up healing your, your soul. Like he was talking mentally and emotionally, but really like it's, it's all encompassing with everything. It is. So, uh, this, the Royce guy who made that thing, we, uh, we were talking the other day, uh, with a bunch of people and he said, you know, the medicine is great. The medicine is powerful. He goes, but I found my salvation in the cultivation. He said, it taught me and highlighted all my character flaws it showed me, you know, uh, that I needed to learn patience. It, it showed me to form a relationship with, with the mushrooms. He and he just went on and on, and I was just like, I mean, I agree. I, I don't, I don't talk about it too much. I get emotional every time I do, but but it's really true that there's, a, like you said, it's almost like the cultivation somehow is the. It, it's like psilocybin is gas for your car, right? But you still have to hit it. You still got to go on a journey down the road on a path. And, and then somehow the cultivation is deepening that spiritual understanding of what's happening. Uh, a quick, quick idea. Somebody said yesterday to me, oh, well, you know, if, uh, if you don't want to talk about, or how did they say it? Something about... Well, I don't want to talk about science. I want to talk about God. And I said, well, when I talk about science, that's exactly who I think I'm talking about, is, yeah. is God. Understanding how the world works, understanding how atoms and molecules and, and living beings work, it, it, that to me is exactly the expression of God that we see all around us, whether you believe in him or not. That, that's real. So, yeah, I... I couldn't I couldn't agree more that really having that really deep relationship with the medicine that you then also use in a very intentful therapeutic way you know you can eat a strawberry or you can grow a strawberry you can you can eat a tomato or you can grow the tomato and then slice it up with reverence and eat it and you know actually bring something sacred into your life which is what, what I really think you guys are all about and you get, and I think that's why everybody loves you who, who gets to know you and comes into contact with you guys. We are super grateful to be able to experience these wonderful interactions with people. Um, we were just talking the other day about a couple of our clients that have been with us for like over a year or something like that. 
They okay. learned how to grow mushrooms in, in one month. We, we have, most of our courses, are, they're one-month course. It's four right. interactions over like a four-week period, one-hour workshop. So we can teach people almost everything they need to know in about four or five hours and uh, maybe a handful of messages. But we have a couple of clients that are really good friends of ours and we still talk to. We've known for years. I know people um, from uh, mushroom groups and Instagram and people that I've connected with and um, – talked uh shop with and done trades with and stuff like that for going on like almost five years now mm -hmm. and okay. you know i'm not i haven't been doing this for a long time i just spent a lot of time on it right. you know and um that has been so wonderful i can relate um, to I that i wanted to bring up for sure one of the main people that um was really awesome and a really huge part of the acceleration of the beginning of my work was Dustin Fisher and um, he was super awesome. And Oh, where, what, how did you find him? Is he local or? So um, he, he passed um, uh, last year um, yeah. and um, he was really big in a lot of the uh, Facebook groups and he okay. interacted with a lot of great people on Instagram and stuff like that. But I remember when I started, the um, Tidal Wave Times 8 project that yielded all these wonderful things like Chode Wave and Skyla and Loaves. Yeah. He wanted some of my work right away. And I was, I was talking to him just a couple of times and showing him some stuff. And he was like, man, he's like, this is going to be a really great project. And I was like, I was right. just barely starting off. And I was like, you know, I was pretty confident. I, I had seen some really cool things and I had, I had done a lot of research already and I, I kind of knew what I was doing as far as the primitive crosses and, and, and how spores interact with each other and right. just what, what was all happening there. Um, and I was t talking to him about it. He's like, Oh man, this is going to be really big. He's like, he's like, you don't know it yet. He's like, but right. um, I believe in you and yeah. I know that this is going to be really big. And so I want, um, you know, a bunch of your stuff right away. And um, I gave him, I don't even think I sold anything. I just sent him a bunch of cool stuff from uh, the beginning of the Tidal Wave 8 project. And then he was one of the first people that found albino phenotypes from albino chode wave. And okay. it was super awesome. And then um, there was a, another guy um, uh, that, was, that I was really close to um, that was from the Myconauts group, um, PJ. And he found another one and then they just start flooding in and it was only a couple months after he said something he, he was telling me how great it was going to be and he knew there's going to be a bunch of awesome stuff popping up and that's basically what we were waiting for at the beginning, beginning of this tidal wave times eight project with chode waves was to see all the ape expressions because at first right. there was a lot of really great combined uh 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 desirable characteristics from both parents but there wasn't a whole lot of just ape expressions. I was like, ah, it's probably coming up soon. And then he said something. Then a couple months later, there was like seven different wow. albino chode wave yeah. expressions. And then we were, you know, we have really great relationships with people. And we're trading stuff back and forth. We're chatting with people every single day or a couple times a week at least about different right. things. And all of the... Um, our first customers or like the first people that we started interacting with at the beginning of that project sent us back stuff from every single um, albino um, isolation or phenotype that popped up. And then we started working on it and we started, we started working on it and then we got a couple generations in on the albino chode wave. And then we started doing giveaways and we gave away a couple hundred swab sets when it first came out. Mm -hmm. And then we add it to our menu and then everyone started running it and, um, or a lot of people, not, maybe not everyone, but, and then a couple of the people, uh, that we're connecting with, uh, really great people from, uh, Psy Team United and another really great vendor, uh, Poppies, uh, oh. from Poppies Force yeah. asked our permission to enter it in the psilocybin cup and okay. Albino Chodway placed I think it was like third or fifth um, 
in therapeutic champion she class uh, one yes. of the years. And then the following uh, cup, it placed like fifth or something. Again, totally different cultivator, uh, right. totally different grow setup, all that, and still was hitting um, that super heavy uh, potency scale. And um, it was really awesome. We were really proud. And um, that was kind of a big thing for the Tidal Wave Times 8 project and the beginning of uh, Chode Wave. Well, I, I've grown it. I know it's, it's a blue one, that's for sure. I mean, it <laughs> used to say it, 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 blew, it blew on break. It, it's, it, <laughs> it does not surprise me that everything it enters, it does well in. Um, it's a slow grower. It resists contamination. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a sweet fruit. That one and loaves are probably... I've, I, I like Makilla Gorilla as well, but I've grown yeah. Chode Wave and Loaves the most just because um, I like them. They're nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, they're real nice. We just connected with a person um, from Australia, Outback Mycology. Oh, and, he's great, um, yeah. He yeah, he's got, really cool. um, he got spores from one of our for one of our first customers or one of the first people nice. that got some loaves and he had gotten loaves from a couple of years ago and then we seen it on his uh, on his mm -hmm. page and stuff and oh shit no way and then mm -hmm. um i asked where he got because there was only just a handful of people in australia that we sent it to specifically right and we asked who it was and it was the exact person that we thought it was and which nice. was another um, customer or, or friend, you know, a person that we met in the community that we uh, stayed in touch with for a really long time. And um, Outback Mycology had gotten some love spores from him uh, before um, this other member moved to New Zealand. He just, he was moving to New Zealand. He was going to do some different stuff or whatever. And, um, and he got rid of a bunch of his stuff um, when he was moving. And um, Outback Mycology ended up with some. And the phenotypes that he found when he grew it were super awesome there's a whole bunch of really huge fruits looking almost like melmac just like really gnarly really beautiful thick stipe pe expressions yeah. and stuff coming out it was awesome and um, he just sent us back a bunch of spores so we're we're all we just put them to agar and we're running them right now yeah. <laughs> we already got spores back from that like a week ago yeah he got nice. a hold of us right away sent us spores back and we're running running them right now well, so we'll get we'll get into this both in the ethics segment and in just a couple minutes here in the uh, um, in the behind the veil. But I do want to say that your attitude about sharing genetics and you know giving it out and it, and it coming back is, I think, where I'm slowly moving towards as I think about this more and as we're exploring the. Um, the, the ethical component of vending spores or genetics and just getting it out there but being very sort of territorial about it. Um, it it's starting to get real hard for me to understand how that's ever going to work. Yeah. So you really can't, you got to really just have that, that spread the spores, you know, that's a great saying. We should really just adopt that to our core and, uh, and there's, and there's enough of everything the to go around. There's enough of Correct. everything for everyone. We can all yep. live in abundance. No one needs to be in competition. This, this is not a competition. This is a celebration. Agreed. You know, yeah. yes. what, what are we competing for? We're competing so right. we can experience the mushrooms. I mean, right. uh, right. uh, so and so has some cool isolations, and so and so has some cool isolations, and so and so has some cool isolations. Yeah. Just share. Just share yeah. everything. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying don't charge for your work it's it's totally fine to charge whatever right. you want for your work but give some shit away too you know and yeah. don't be so stingy about who gets to grow what it's like it it's a living organism that came from the earth first you might have uh, fiddled right. with it and you know tweaked it and molested yep. it a little bit but you know it's not yours you know it's yeah. it's everyone's to share and and oh. uh, there's another practical aspect of that which we're we're doing a little side project in the um in the discord and uh <clears throat> we're just realizing that a lot of breeders you know they they 
they do a cross, they get some F1 spores, they work one or two uh, germinations of that. And then they kind of sit on some F1 spores and they, they just keep moving forward. But genetically, the spores from F1 and F2, I mean, that's where all the magic is. So when you say stuff like, oh, we just gave away 200 spores from that first uh, filial generation. Well, that's why all the cool stuff came back to you guys, because you got it out there. Because you can't do, you're not going to, you can't grow the 200 swabs out, right? Like, oh, it's just too much work. You gotta you get it out there. Like, Nobody even does. If you get, yes. Have like a warehouse full of stuff. It'd be like right. a good twenty, thirty years. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, and you know, we found like you know, we are all for the universe, and the more that you give, the more that you kind of get back too. And um, yep. that's just how it goes. We're not really necessarily in this for like the money, which is we don't want to hold nice on to everything. Financial, either. you know, gain from it, right. but at the same time, it's. We we want to share. We rather we rather right. share the love than than have to, than keep it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like uh, Scientology, right? It's uh, the minute you just start charging for your ideas and membership and all that stuff, you just you sour the whole spiritual journey by doing that. It's fair to want to make a buck for your hard work. There's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, the yeah. The, yeah, the, the dollar sign change. Correct. Yes. Everything's an energy exchange. You can't just be doing shit for free all the time, but but it yes. is fun to share, and it's it's nice to just feel kind of relaxed about that too. You know, I feel like the more relaxed we feel about things, and the more time that we um, spend putting ourselves in flow state energy and kind of just going with whatever's happening and whatever feels yeah. good, we're using our intuition. We're, we're investing in relationships. Relationships and um, building things with people really makes the world a great place. So um, we're, we're, we're in, the, in the business of selling um, customized um, mycology and uh, mushroom cultivation education packages. But as far as like spores and stuff like that go and isolation, we want to be able to share that with yeah. people as freely as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, so again, right, you guys did the work. You're, you're creating a, an educational series, right? You're, that's, that takes work, and that's what you got to charge for. It's, uh, anyway, lo loving everything you're doing. So let's move on. We sort of touched on a little bit about uh, some of your isolations here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to formally move on to our second segment, which is Behind the Veil. We're going to do Chode Wave, and if we have enough time, we're even going to get into uh, Makilla Gorilla and maybe even Loves. We'll, we'll see how we're doing here. So, all right, let me, all right, look at that. Overlay City, here we go. Nice. All right, so I, I'm just going to tell you, um, I don't think I've ever grown Chode Wave OG, but Albino Chode Wave I, I got from uh, uh, our, our buddy DC a while back, and fell in love and it, I think I've had two different phenotypes sort of express themselves but it, it's really fun I have had a lot of people over my time in mycology so far be like what's this chode wave people are talking about chode wave what's chode wave where'd it come from what is it so how about how about we start all the way back chode wave OG let's just talk about the birth of chode wave okay so I'm gonna set the stage. <laughs> I am do. a, I'm as a beginner mycologist. <laughs> in my my early days of researching, growing mushrooms, and I'm at home and I have like, I don't know, maybe twenty or thirty different types of spores, and okay. I had grown ape a couple of times, and I had a couple of uh, shrapnel test tastings after doing some clones, right? Okay. And I'm like, oh, holy shit, Ape is really beautiful, really strong. I'm uh -huh. going multidimensional on my couch with the blanket over my head in the middle of the, the night. at 4 a.m. in the morning. I'm like, <laughs> right. I took a bunch of clones earlier, and then I went to this really <laughs> special place for a while. Right. And then, so I really enjoyed Ape, and I was like, okay, I got to do something with this. Ape's really great. And I grew Tidal Wave alongside it um, for a couple of weeks. And 
they were always together. I remember they would always finish at the same time. And okay. I was like, okay, I should do, I, we should do a tidal wave times eight thing. I think that would be mm-hmm. great. Um, tidal wave um, is a super awesome mutant producer, super chaotic, um, right. random. It, it just throws all different types of phenotypes. Um, and the one that we were working with had a lot of really crazy wavy cap action and it would have really fat type PE looking fruits. Tidal Wave is, is originally as a, a B plus PE um, yep, okay. combo already. So it's already its, its own cross uh, as I've been for uh, a few years. And then I... And now I can um, pull up, let, let me pull up your, are, are these the right? Am yeah, I too that's, soon? That's, that's some of the first ones. Uh, that is, I think, an F two. Um, the very first. Oh, sorry, one I got, the... I got ahead. I thought, I thought I was doing good. I, I jumped, <laughs> I jumped the gun, yeah. didn't I? The okay. really big okay. one, the one that's that was just a cake. The picture that's just a cake. That one, I believe, was the the original. That was from a T zero plate. So we did a whole bunch of T zero plates. We we mixed spores, did very primitive mixed spores together. But we did fresh okay. spores. We did. We grew them alongside each other for so long. They were always finishing at the same time. And I always had a okay. really nice ape and really nice tidal wave all the time finishing. And so I did multiple versions of this multiple times, four or five times. Um, okay. And then I did five different sets. I did three different sets of five T0 plates. I'm talking really loud right now, I feel like. No, you're um, good. He always says this yelling. <laughs> and um, out of all those, um, I think 12 made it. So I only lost three out of the 15 uh, okay. T zeros. So, that we ran so about. are you mixing the two spores in a solution and then squirting it on a plate, or what are you doing? No, we we're doing it a very primitive where we did a shotgun wedding. We're going back to back. We got two fruits that mm-hmm. we wanted to use, mm-hmm. and we're swabbing back and forth. Uh, um, okay, ghetto, group. ghetto swab. Okay, yep. Yep. that's safe. I think people and, call it ghetto. Yeah. And yep. then, um, and then I we ran all those T zeros, and then we took a look at it. We had a lot of different characteristics from both uh, parent fruits that we used, and then we um, shared um, F one spores for free to a bunch of different people, um, right. Dustin and PJ and. Um, a couple other guys, uh, uh, DC and and um, Abe King and some other peeps got some, uh, gave away a whole bunch of right. OG chode wave spores. And then we ran that up to F4. And then at F4 split off a whole bunch. And there was like four or five different phenotypes that were okay. very, very... Um, consistent and so um, from those four or five different phenotypes we ran clones a couple of times and then we went back to spore on it and then each one of those became a new project so from that there was um, Skyla and Loaves and then we had another one um, but we did not keep running it or let go spores of it Um, and then we worked on those till all those were at like F4s and then we started making those spores available. Once we kind of decided that we we're getting pretty consistent results and we enjoyed them, we made spores available for sale. Before that though, we still gave away a whole bunch of swabs right, yeah. in between all that. And people um, would get a hold of us and share pictures with us from their grows. We'd always tell people, you know, um, if they want to send us an update or if they want to chat about stuff or if they wanted to, to um, ask some questions about anything to hit us up um, and we would answer right. messages at our earliest convenience. Obviously, we have a lot of other things going on. I'm working full time during that whole entire time. And then, um, you know, we have a few kids and a, a lot of other just things going on. And we're doing a lot of stuff, you know. So, But I was spending four hours a day every single day almost um, after work working on my projects. And right. I would go from, I could go from a uh, T0 transfer on something, T0 MS transfer to 
like a T4 in like possibly a week if I'm really watching my plates, you know, okay. or maybe 10 days. And then um, we would just line stuff up and we're learning how to make um, substrates that we like to use and um, coming up with agar recipes that we like to use and then talking shop with a lot of people. And that was kind of the beginning of, of the Tidal Wave Type 8 project and then us deciding how we wanted to do things. A lot of people were um, trying to like act like they could make up rules about when it's appropriate to release something or right. um, set a standard of what trusted cultivators should be doing. And we, we didn't really agree with all of that too much because we felt it was really controlling and um, that's not how nature feels to us. Um, it feels right. very free. And so um, even though we're growing these in a controlled environment, we're connecting with an organism that originally came from nature and is helping us experience our consciousness. Right. And we're constantly deciding through this interaction that it's making us want to be more free. You know, we're wanting to leave everyone's program of being told what we can and can't do and doing what we want to fucking do. You know, because right. yep. we're beautiful energies, we're beautiful souls. We came to this earth to experience this with everyone, and we don't want to be suppressed or constricted by anyone's rules or be told how we can grow something or advance something. And so we did right. things the way that we wanted to do them, and we gave away a shit ton of F1, F2, F3 spores to anyone we damn well please give them away to. And we felt very good about it because all those people got really clean spores from us because we really care about what we're doing and they were able to grow them and find so many fucking awesome things to play with yeah so well and then but also there's the other point of you can't do all the work i can't do all the work no. it's like my, yeah. my buddy ed started crossing stuff and he's like oh my god it's just too much already i've only been doing this for like a month and a half he's like you gotta farm you could, it out man you gotta farm it out you you gotta you have to i mean i remember uh buying something from dave wombat one time and he's like ah, i threw in like four other things you know i make no promises about any of them just if yeah. you feel like growing them see what you get and i was like oh okay i i get what you're doing you're that i i get it now you're you're farming out the work, which you have to do. Other people have to be growing the stuff. Realistically, if you grew one, let's say you do a cross, you grow out one sixty-six quart tub of fruit, and you swab all those fruit, let's say you get five or six hundred swab sets off of that, you could send that out, and you still wouldn't have hit all the, all the genetic possibility that, that came from that cross. Oh, it's no. just, it, it's endless. Yeah, well, you gotta you get to, it out there. You have to factor in too um, the capability. Not everyone that you're sending it to is going to be successful. So sure, the yeah. the the more you're able to share, the more successful your projects are going to be because then lots of people have chances at growing them. Lots of people have right. chances of yep. sharing them, and lots of people have opportunities to explore that medicine and. They're all a little bit different. You know, a lot of people try to act like uh, mushrooms are all exactly the same. Uh, if it's the same species, it's the same this, the same that. But it's really not. Uh, a lot of it comes down to alchemy and the energy that's put into doing something sure. or growing something. We all do things differently, right? And so we all have different success and different act interaction in the world. I'm not doing the exact same thing that my friend over in Australia is doing. And I'm not living the exact same way that my friend across the river is living. You know, we're all making different choices and we all have different energy and we're all putting different things into all the things that we choose. And yeah. so you're going to get a different result. And the intention that you have when you go about exploring that interaction is going to make a big deal, too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so some uh, I, I want to highlight a comment here. Uh, where was it here? Of course, I can't find it now. Anyway, somebody said, oh, sending out F1 spores is a, is a roll of the dice. Exactly. That's exactly the point. You, you're getting more people to roll more dice, and, and, and you, you got more stuff going on. Now, if your whole agenda is to 
hold on to that one phenotype, you know, that golden, you know, phenotype and, and, and then capitalize on it, yes, then obviously don't do that. Work, work in your basement by yourself. Do your best. Hopefully you get lucky. But the, the mentality and attitude you're talking about that I've talked about with Dave Wombat, that my buddy Ed Grand is talking about, and that literally everybody on my Discord is talking about, is the, what if we all work together and see what happens? And that's working out great on my Discord. We're doing lots of cool stuff there. Uh, building a lot of friendships, uh, really deep, meaningful relationships with people, uh, doing some fun stuff, and everybody's learning how to grow. I Even in just... Four months, I've seen people, like you said, go from not knowing what they're doing to, I don't need to tell you anything anymore. You you got it all figured out now. And that's cool to see people get to that point. And then they become ambassadors for what we're all about. Yeah. Um, the whole um, holding on to genetics thing. I, I totally get, like, valuing something and deciding that something's special. You know, I get that. Yeah, you, sure. You feel attached to things. Uh, people create things. I'm a creator. Um, I have spent my whole life creating things. Um, before this, I, I created lots of other things. And I'm an artist. Um, I make beautiful children. Um, I, I'm a builder. You know, I, I know how to do all these different things. And I nurture all these skills. And so I have more of them, you know. And, and what I have learned is that um, the more that I share with people and the more open I am and the more um, abundant energy I'm, I'm giving out to the world, the more of that I get back. And so yeah. I, we never have to worry about anything. Everything yeah. that we want comes to us. Everything that we could ever imagine needing has always showed up when we need it. Yeah. Um, we live a very comfortable life. Um, we're not super rich or anything, but um, our needs are met and we have really great relationships with people and we're living a really high quality of life. And that is because we actually care about stuff. You know, um, we're not trying to, um, you know, hold that iron grip around that right. one thing that we think is so special that it has to be just ours and right. we're going to make something off of it. It just, it's just, it's not right. part of us. It's not part of our energy. We're more into sharing what we can with everyone and making everything better. It's not just yeah. about us, you know. We're, we're living in this abundant and generous energy, and we want to give as much as we can while, you know, taking good care of ourselves, you know. We, we like luxurious shit, you know. We like having fun. We like going and doing cool stuff, you know. So we're keeping some stuff for ourselves, too. You know, we got, right. we got a bunch of cool right. shit in the wings that's just for us, right. but we're also sharing a lot of really wonderful things That's great. at the same time. All right, so so I think you finally got me. Sorry, I, I got off track a little bit, and we both did. So let's let's get back on to Chode Wave. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the enthusiasm, I I get it. You gotta you gotta roll with it. It's just how it is. You you can't stop the can't stop the the enthusiasm. Oh, so baby. I think this was the cake you were talking about, right? Yeah. So that's okay. from a T zero, um, from our. Tidal Wave OG that we ran for quite okay. a while, probably over a year, and then we had Ape um, that was really nice that we ran for a little bit longer. Okay. The Ape that we used was originally from Sporeworks. I had grown it for about a year, and then I found a whole bunch of super fat, thick type fruits that look like the biggest one here popping off, uh, yeah. hanging a left. Um, and um, super thick, super fat style, really nice looking fruits. And then the tidal wave that we had was a pretty typical looking tidal wave, a little bit thicker style, more of a PE looking fruit, kind of looked okay. like these, but with a more ripply cap, the, the okay. tidal wave did. Mm -hmm. And then um, we got to, oh yeah. I think that's, that's, nice that's the same, that's the same that's cake, the right? View. Top view. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and that was, I think this one was a F3 from the Chode Wave OG. I think okay. if, if you did them in order, it would have been the, the cake is F1, the the tin foil spread was F2, and then this was F3. Yeah, so 
F1, F2, F3. Yep, okay. And then that is F4. Nice. And then when we got and Now they're, there, getting, we're they're doing, getting a little more uniform here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're doing really small, or we're doing um, a lot of grow bags. Mm -hmm. The first yep. couple batches we did um, in the F2 and F3 were mono tubs and I think we had just started using the gasketed tubs which everyone really likes we love the gas gasketed tubs and um and yeah we ran we ran a whole bunch of the f2 and f3 and then we quickly kind of moved on to f4 and then we did a bunch of grow bags when we did those so we could do one jar per bag um three um quarts of um substrate and go nice. um yeah, and, and that those always turned out really nice. Um, yeah. And then from there, we kind of we started doing a lot of stuff in the unicorn bags or the grow bags because it was really nice to be able to do, especially for pheno hunting, to be able to do a small setup and do one jar. Right. And so it, it's beautiful doing one jar because if you do one jar and, and it doesn't turn out, you only lost one jar. You know, I'm you didn't mix it with four or five yeah. other jars. And you didn't use as much substrate and you get to take a look at what's there and then take clones and then, you know, move forward. Right. So yeah. that we did a lot of that where we're just um, doing as many single jar unicorn bags or grow bags that we could do. And then we're cloning and then stabilizing from there. And then, um, yeah, we just kept, we just kept on that trend. And like so I now said, how do you, how do you go from showed wave to albino showed wave? How, how do we get there? So we shared a bunch of the F4 um, okay. swabs with a bunch of really awesome people. And then from the F4 swabs, all of the albino phenotypes started popping up and then the ape expressions started coming through. And uh. so then we got um, the first one was from our buddy Dustin. And this is chode wave OG. So this is some of the genetics from from the some of the first um, albino chode wave. Okay. And then um, that's the albino chode wave squats. That was quite a bit further down the line. That's probably oh, going okay, to like sorry. F6 or something. That one right there. Or that's F7. Beauty. Yeah. Yeah. And she then. She's definitely a, a girl mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it went from masculine so to feminine. feminine. We had a yeah. couple of really gnarly chode wave they squat mushrooms <laughs> that looked like giant pussies. Like yeah. literally, they were just they were this, these huge floppers, and they were gorgeous. They were. Uh, this one's also the um, OG. Um, okay. And we had some monster fruits in the beginning of that. I think some of the stuff that people found that they sent back to us. Was, was pretty normal size, more like just regular ape size, okay. um, you know, bigger um, fruits. And then they started getting turned into squats and getting tall and huge wavy caps. And then it just went crazy. And then um, people were sending us all kinds of pictures. They're sending us tons of pictures over Facebook. People are getting hold of us on Instagram saying that they had gotten um, some spores from uh, – one of our buddies or they had gotten some uh clone plates from someone or whatever people that was too at, at the beginning of it people were really getting into selling a lot of plates and people were getting into selling cultures a lot more um and right. it wasn't just spores and so people were like bam they're like you know they found chode wave people were like you know um just producing people are pumping out plates and selling yeah. shit ton of chode wave and different melmax and stuff like that and um, we were really enjoying it. We were in the thick of it because every single new thing that somebody came up with, they were coming to us and being like, oh, you grew this. You all right. started this. Like, we got to get you some clones or we got to send some spores back to you. And then we're like, oh, yeah, of course you do. Like, we're, we're gonna, we'll grow that shit. And then we would we would get on it. There'd be no hit sitting on stuff forever. Like, normally when people send us stuff, within like a couple of weeks to a month, we will um, start working on whatever they sent us. Yeah. And then we'll, you know, uh, two months later after we got gifted something, we're like, you know, sharing pictures of whatever, you know, gifts that we got right. a couple of months ago. And, and then we kept a whole bunch of stuff. And then 
we try to keep um, albino chode wave on our menu um, as much as possible after that kind of went down and we decided that some of the um, isolations we were working on we really liked and, and were stable and we were going to keep them and then um, and then the Skyla was beginning to get really popular too and we had a lot of people uh, friends in Australia that were liking that one and sending us pictures of that one and and giving us updates and sharing scores back with us and then the lows kind of hung out for a while a couple people really liked it it, it looked like um, Hawaiian sweet rolls or like some, some nice big buttery dinner rolls. Mm -hmm. Had really nice caramely kind of soft brown tones and stuff like that. And really, really uh, nice buttery uh, shiny looking caps. And uh, we really liked that one. That one didn't gain as much traction early on, but really awesome. Um, now that one's going to be super hot. We just got a bunch of that, a bunch of spores from Outback Mycology from a bunch of new stuff from Lowe. So that one's going to be, nice. that one's going to be coming up pretty soon here. It's, so it's, it's time. My Lowe's was albino. So I, I, I don't know if that was a case of uh, DC mislabeling it. And, and I actually had another pheno of chode wave. I don't know, but my loaves were fat, but they looked a little bit more like, oh, I mean, they were white. They were albino. You know, I and noticed, I gave away a billion swabs of those, so it's all out there. So somebody yeah. hopefully will. I, I haven't seen any albino ones, um, and I noticed and um, just heard a lot that um, a lot of people that got stuff from him did yeah. get some pretty mixed up stuff. Yeah, it, it, um, it, it could be one of the others. Yeah, and um, that that happens. Um, sure. Sometimes it happens more often than not when people are like, you know. Uh, racking up shit tons of cultures and they got like fucking yeah. 97 isolations that right. they're taking transfers from and you know selling boxes and boxes of plates yeah. i'm sure it's easy to get stuff mixed up when you're doing stuff like that which yeah. you know we don't we don't care we're not um yeah. concerned about anyone else's business or anyone else's um flow um we, right. we we're totally down with whatever anybody wants to do but it is nice when people actually get what they pay for. So it is nice. Um, yes. So so you are also uh, the guy behind Makilla Gorilla. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So um, that is the from the T zero um, project or the T zero plate that we used to create. This we did um, DC Mac. Um, we did like DC Mac 95 or like a, a larger uh, DC Mac isolation with okay. a Ape F5 flower monster is what I called it because it always okay. uh, pushed really hard and split the caps and they would end up looking like petals. But I did this, I had okay. like a 96 gram ape fruit and like 150 or 140 gram um, Mac fruit that I did across with and i just did it as a gift at first for uh dc i sent it to him as a gift i right. gave him all the swabs from that specific grow bag so i swabbed everything in that grow bag for him um as the gift because i i ran it produced did did f1 got f1 spores for him and then i took a clone of the albino fruit and saved it for myself and then sent one to him and then i took a clone of one of the larger fruits in that bag. And then okay. I ran both of those separately and then I crossed them again and then again and then again. And then I saved that and then grew that out a couple different times and then started sharing um, MMR times Ape, which was basically another version of Makilla Gorilla. Same genetics, different okay. genotypes more or less. And then, and then we started doing more of them. That's a really recent one. So that's okay. a super advanced one. That's like, that's probably from um, a couple of years ago, maybe okay. maybe a year after it started. And that was from a MMR times ape genetic. It wasn't from the specific Makilla gorilla phenotype that okay. we shared. That one is really awesome. That one's like a F16 or something like that. Okay. Of, 
has super, super long, super nice stipes and those big fat wavy caps and, and the all the dot stars on top. Too. Yeah, the uh, universal veil dots or whatever yeah. on the top still. Yeah. Really gorgeous. Uh, people nice. have been really enjoying that. Um, I had a lot of instances recently where people share that like, oh, where did this come from? What's over this one? Like, oh, snap, beautiful. That looks beautiful. Right. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, I think even um, Dave Wombat, like a couple weeks ago, um, was sharing some Makilla Gorilla and was like, who who came up with this shit? This shit is amazing. Yeah. And someone piped up and said, oh, or I think maybe Silla Vibin or something like that. It was like, oh, um, yeah. uh, good old Raymond uh, uh, yeah. is to thank for that one. And, yeah. and he gave us some compliments on that or whatever. Um, a couple other people um, from Spore Swaps um, uh, shared, I think, um, Chaos Genetics or something like that, or uh, okay. one of our other buddies um, shared a super awesome grow from Makilla Gorilla, and they were like, I, can't, I, don't, I couldn't even believe how huge they were. They were like 10 inches tall or something like that, eight wow. and a half inches tall. They're looking like freaking... Um, Melmac Homestead fruits or something like that. They were just crazy and really nice caps and uh, really crazy with the ripply caps. I've seen a lot of really nice expressions, a lot of ripply cap expressions from that one for sure. Nice. Well, so I'm okay, so we're going to move on, but before we do, I want to recap what I'm my takeaway here is uh, a lot of your stories, your origin stories involve generosity getting f1 spores out there um it, it, it's abundantly clear that you're so generous that if, if anybody has something interesting pop up from what one of the swab sets that you send them of course they're going to send it back to you oh hey i just got this cool thing you want it oh great well, you, let me send it you to got you got it for free to start off, off right. with my so why share, not right <laughs> exactly yeah so that that's i i think that's Okay, so I, did, I didn't say this before. I remember seeing a list uh, that was circulating on Facebook of the origin of all these different cultigens. And, uh, you know, Uncle Jay kept popping up. Or I, I think actually the one I saw, it, I think sometimes, one time it said Uncle Jay, but it usually actually said uh, Ray Medici. But I was like, wow, it, like, what does Dave Wombat and this guy have in common? Do they both, like, live uh, on top of, like, a radioactive site? Is there, like, s what are they doing to get all... Where'd you go? Where'd you go, brother? Where'd you go? 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 Hi, Overjoyed. Hi, wow. Emily. Hi, Emily. We are having all sorts of fun with StreamYard tonight. Luckily, I... You're saying hi to some of the guests while you were out for a minute. Great. Thank you for entertaining the crowd while I drop off the Lady face Marks. of the planet. Silly TV, uh, what up? So, yeah, uh, you know, you, you, you've done a lot, and I think it's great for people to hear that story of, uh, uh, you know, that, that theme of generosity and... Um, and that the relationships that you build and, and the people you trade stuff with and, and what you what you put out you get back, that's that's pretty great. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, man. We are so grateful to be able to just to uh, interact with so many awesome people. And um, it's been effortless. You know, like we put in hard work when it comes to actually working on our mycology and our cultivation projects, but um, the interactions that we have, effortless. Uh, we never have drama with people. Uh, right. we, we, we have no reason to say anything bad about anyone. We don't have any beef with anyone. Um, some people have come and um, tried to claim credit for some of my genetics um, a few times, and um, I, I haven't ever really made a big stink about it. I'll make sure that I uh, let everyone know how things really are and, and right. who really created what. And I have lots of uh, logged information on my Google backups and my computer and, um, and whatnot to 
prove all of our work. And right. even even after like four and a half, almost five years of uh, working on stuff, I probably have a good three and a half years worth of solid data on all of my projects. And um, which I don't really care to dispute it with anyone anyway. Um, I um, really just want to set this example that the more that you go out of your way to um, share this abundant energy with people and to give of yourself, you know, share your energy and enjoy uh, this connection, the better time you're going to have. Um, all of the people that um, like to cause a lot of drama and start shit and lie and try to take credit for other people's work, they're not having a good time. I can tell. No, I can tell they get kicked not. out of groups and they get blacklisted and all kinds of weird shit happens right. and you know it puts bad taste in people's mouths so um we're just we're just trying to set a good example and and really fucking enjoy mushrooms because we love mushrooms very yeah. much and we That's really get into part. the gourmet grows and we really love lion's mane and reishi and um oyster mushrooms and stuff and we're really yeah. enjoying experiencing those as well and being able to share that with people is fucking priceless it it makes my heart sing Agreed. Yeah. All right. So we're now moving into the ethics segment. I'm, I'm going to pull up the title card. It'll make it easier for me to to, to find the, uh, uh, the this this chapter marker. Everybody's complaining I don't have timestamps, guys. It t I barely have time to do this. I, I'm working on getting more timestamps. Hopefully, with the segments and, and the title cards, it's going to get a little bit easier for me. All right. So we're doing ethics, mushroom ethics. Ongoing conversation. Out back. What's up, brother? All right. So, uh, I have had, since being in this community, have had some just amazing experiences. I've had some bad experiences. I have, uh, I, I was voted most opinionated at my high school during mock elections. I got an opinion about everything. And so, of course, I have an opinion about how we seem to be governing ourselves. And so, Ray, you brought up a great point of the, you know, you just weren't buying this whole, like, being regulated on when you could release something and that you had to wait until it was the most stable thing on earth or that it was perfect or whatever, whatever that even means for mushrooms, I don't even know. But but that you distinctly disagreed with that. And, and you you wanted to get stuff out there, which, which I like. It makes sense on multiple layers. How about we start talking about right there this idea that if you cross something or you isolate something and you want to get it out, that there's some sort of magical place you have to get to first. You know, whether it's F4 or F7 or F8 or F59 or F472, like, why does that not make sense to you? Why should it be okay to just do whatever the hell you want to do anyway? I would love to share my feelings on that. Um, okay. <laughs> so Yay! I remember when um, I was kind of doing some research on people working on isolations and um, trusted cultivators, which I have lots of respect for um, the old guys and the OGs and all that. Definitely not um, trying to um, act like um, my word is gospel. Um, th these are opinions, right? These right. Opinions this is your take. Mind. Yep. This, is, this is how I feel about something. And I have every right to express how I feel about you things. And I do every day, all day long. I'm a very upfront, very honest person. Uh, maybe even to the point where it's possibly a little bit annoying or yucky yes. for people to experience. <laughs> and But that makes me feel good. That that makes me feel like I'm honoring myself when I'm honest about things. Yeah. And so when I was reading about people working on stuff, I was reading a lot of opinions that to be professional about things when you're working on isolations or um, different types of serious cultivation projects that you need to wait till you're at like a F4 or F5 possibly when you get 
multiple runs of really stable results. So that way, when you're handing it off or when you're making it available for sale, people are happy with what they're getting and they're getting really consistent results every single time. And right. I, I think that that's fine if that's what some people want to choose to do. But I don't think anyone should hold another person to their standard of that type of work where it's like you telling me whether or not I can be wild and free or if I have to be chased and reserved. Uh, I really enjoy being with nature. And in my personal experience, nature is very wild and free. And that's yeah. how I feel yes. inside. My heart is very wild and free and I want to do whatever the fuck I want. I don't want to be constrained or suppressed by anyone else's opinions or ideals or paths. You know, I, I, I want to walk my own path. I want to do things the way that I want to do them. And so when I decided to start some of these things and I was getting to a point where I wanted to share things, it didn't matter too much to me um, how stable something was if I was giving it away for free, if I'm sharing mm -hmm. things for free and I, I'm really enjoying what I'm working on and I am just feeling good about it, that is me sharing part, right. of, me, part of my energy with people and that is me being true to myself and being honest with myself. And I believe if people took more time to be honest with themselves and honor themselves and do what they really think is good for them, um, people would be a lot happier and people wouldn't have all of this drama and this, um, this um, weird um, uh, reserve kind of uh, gatekeepy energy about them. You know, when yep. you want to hold on to every last fucking isolation or phenotype that you worked on because you think it's going to be a winner and you think you're going to sell a whole bunch of swabs or, or isolation work from it. It, it just it just seems so exhausting and so gross. Like why? Like sure. why do you have to hold on to this stuff? That's kind of like I, this whole uh, idea of if you love something, just let it be. Just let it be good. Like if you see a beautiful flower, you don't go up and fucking rip it out of the ground right away and then smell it and throw it away. Let the fucking thing grow. You know, right. let it be. Let it be wild and free. Let it do its thing. Yeah. So yeah. So this, I kind of like, love. Oh, sorry, go my. I was just thinking, like, there's, like, this low-grade stress, I think, in the community, too, of being able to do things, like, the right way. And there, like, right. really is no, like, right way. There's, I mean, this is mycology is science. Like, it's all right. about, like, exploring and, and figuring out what's best and there, for yourself and for the, the right. thing that you're working with. There are definitely trustworthy texts that for people sure. should be following. Yes. But as far as genetics work, I don't think that there should be any, like, set standards or... Um, ideals or, or rules that people right. should be held to for any of that, especially if people are just sharing stuff, they're just wanting to share stuff and they're not trying to make money off of it. You know, um, I, I think that it's completely acceptable for people to just share whatever the fuck they want to share. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that let's talk about this. So, okay. First off, I, while that's probably my style more, mostly it's because I think that getting more F1 and F2 spores out, like, in mass, is going to increase the likelihood that we find cool stuff. And at the end of the day, the, the cool fruit definitely attracts newbies to the hobby, right? Like, seeing all these different morphologies is very attractive, and, and it, it, it will get more people into the hobby. Um, because, you know, of course, if it's just about the psilocybin any of these fruit have it in it so it doesn't matter obviously there's more to this cultivation practice there is a different relationship you have with different morphologies it's just like people with dogs right like some people like shih tzus some people like chihuahuas some people like irish wolfhounds because everybody's a different person they're attracted to different morphologies and having more morphologies in our community will be good for the community as a whole. So I 100% am all about that, but I also can appreciate, I mean, obviously it's, everybody can do whatever they want to do. I also appreciate the like Wizard of Oz, 
like the mad scientist who is is brewing up this thing that we have never seen we don't know what what it is and then all of a sudden it's just like bam there it is cool i love that and assuming it's not outrageously priced i will probably want to buy it as well um yeah but that doesn't mean that because that's how some people are running the show that that's how the show has to be run universally is is kind of where i'm getting to at this point and like you said if you're giving it away for free or for example obviously if a spore set represents an amount of work you've done if you've done only one generation of work that swab set costs less than if you're at filial generation 15 and you've worked on it for four years and you really think there's something special there obviously at that point um, those swabs could could and should cost more money or if something's just exceptionally rare somebody got lucky cross something really cool you you know unanimously agreed upon that it's very cool of course charge more money for that for rarity right diamonds cost more than topaz do for a reason they're harder to find but again yeah, everyone can the, decide what they want to do as far as yes. that goes you know i mean uh, you're not going to make anyone buy your stuff. So if people are right. into it, they're into it. So, yep. you know, that's uh, that's all for everyone to figure out. Oh, what's up, Trace? I got some for you. I got I got a, I got a special thing here. <laughs> Uh-oh, Trace showed up. Ray is just leaving the the living oh, room now. Oh my gosh. Now. <laughs> like these then. Uh, there <laughs> oh, we go. Bananas. You, you see how big? Is it banana for scale? Banana, banana for scale. Trace, I did it. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I had to do that. Uh, we have a, a banana for scale. She said nice. Running joke. Gotta have bananas all day every nice. day. I don't want to see. I don't want to see any more. I don't want to see any more disgusting Bic lighters on beautiful <laughs> canopies, all right? This, Only fruit. Fruit this on is fruit. New, this, is, this is the modern age right here, okay? This is a banana, and it goes on top of your mushrooms or next to your mushrooms, okay? No more fucking Bic lighters on shit. I know what you do with those weird things. You'd be smoking weird shit with them and pushing bowls down and whatever the fuck you do. Sure. It, it's about the bananas, okay? Oh my god. All right. You, you have your bananas look very fresh, I'm not gonna lie. You I just bought them. I just bought okay. them especially okay. for this. Nice. I'm gonna have to make banana bread now. There's no way I can eat that many bananas. You will. Well we have we, we have a house, so there is. <laughs> but. Yeah, we have a section in our freezer just for bananas that we're gonna make into banana bread that we Almost yep. never making a banana bread. Yeah, we save ours for smoothies too. How, how yeah. big of a container do you have going? I mean, we easily have how many bananas you just presented to our viewership yeah. in our in our freezer at any given time. Yes, that's awesome. We we are better at freezing old bananas than we are, I think, at eating bananas. Actually, yeah, we're not gonna yeah. eat it right. Yes. Um, I, that's great. I love bringing, you know, the, the fruit into the fruit. That's, that's nice. Um, and Ray is just, he's so free. He's just going to eat bananas right now and blend into the, the oh, gills man. of, uh, of his mushroom backdrop. We, we have so much fun, um, working together. It's, it's a lot of fun. We're constantly, um, cracking jokes and, he loves doing like different voices and things like that and it's it's just a lot of fun <laughs> we have a lot of fun we set up our our sabs sometimes across from each other yeah. we nice. put a little candle in the middle and okay. you know we do some mm -hmm. eye gazing and do some swabs a couple of clones <laughs> Hey, you know what I say? What what two adult individuals do with their SABs in the privacy of their own home? That is their business. Yes. Oh my God. We're we're little boyers, you know. We like to share our SAB yeah. time. Just compare techniques. I know how it goes. Uh. SAB and candlelight. 
Also, the sterilizing method works out great. It's wonderful. All right, so 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 for ethics, let me ask you guys a couple questions. So, mm -hmm. if you were a if you were a vendor who had something, because I actually had this happen to me. Um, it seems like a lot of times there are unwritten laws, unwritten rules about what you're supposed to or not supposed to do with genetics. Now, of course, the reality is people are trading genetics all the time. I, it did not take me long before people said, hey, uh, I see you have X, Y, and Z. I will trade you for LMNOP. How about that? Great, let's do that. So that happens. Um, but I got in trouble by a, a vendor who, who basically blacklisted me because when I decided to gift a bunch of liquid culture that I got from him and expanded for the first time, um, that, I wasn't supposed to do that. That was like a bad thing. And I, I had no clue. I apologized up and down. I offered him money uh, to make up for it. I felt really bad because I didn't know the rules. Um, but like, how, how do you guys navigate that? Like, uh, you, you know, are you just at a point where you're you're trying to read the vi read the room of the vendor before you you start exchanging genetics, or, or what do you do? So, first off, um, we're not down with shit like that, and right. um, we wouldn't do a trade with someone that was. And if we did find out that someone was like that. We would say, um, okay, we're not going to promote your stuff. And it's not about, like, uh, getting you back or anything, but right. we're just not comfortable in interacting right. that way because that's not how we are. So gotcha. my um, unwritten rule that I have has always been if I sell something to you or give you something and you can grow it, you can do whatever the fuck you want with it. Right. And I hope that you can do all those things and you can share it. So right. regardless of whether or not you sell it or you trade it or you give it away, it, I feel like if I let something go, right, if I let my intellectual property or my creation go into the wild, then it's free game, you know? Um, that that I, really... I would never, yeah. I would just... I would never do that. I would never... Um, come at someone and be like, "Whoa, what are you doing? Like, you can't you can't share my isolation. You, you were just supposed to grow that all by yourself and never share it with anyone." Right. Like why? now, so I ha I have received genetics, like you you were saying earlier. It'd be great if you get the thing you thought you bought. Yeah. But I've received genetics from people who thought they I think they thought they were selling me what I wanted and then I got it and absolutely was not that and I am fairly certain that they never actually grew that stuff out they just get it in as a plate culture they keep transferring it they're immediately selling it on their menu yeah. I have a problem with that just because if you're gonna actually sell something for money you should you probably should have done yeah. any amount of work on it and know what yeah. it is yeah, um, you need to work it. If you're gonna, if yeah. you're, especially if you're gonna sell culture plates of stuff, yeah. you need to work it a couple of times to actually make sure you know what you're working with. Um, I agree. And um, yeah. a couple of people have done this, and then um, I think uh, last year or maybe a little bit longer ago, somebody came up with a really funny um, name for that. Um, right? It's uh, culture vulture. Right? right. It's a good name. <laughs> Culture vulture. I thought it's, that was the yeah. most hilarious thing. When I heard that, I was like, somebody was talking about this exact scenario where somebody's like selling all this shit that they're not actually working. They might be working some stuff, whatever, whoever the person right. is. Uh, there's a very specific person that's done this that's almost famous for it. I'm not going to name any names. I don't want to be a, a, a huge dick. I just want to be a medium-sized dick. Um, and... Um, no doxing. We're not going to, in this exploration of ethics, Anyways, we're not going to dox anybody. Yeah. I, I think that it's just, it's yucky. Nobody yeah. needs to be doing that. And yeah. um, it's, it's, it's not very ethical, right? I mean, right. Uh, uh, and especially, it's, it's, frequ it's frequently sold at the same rate. So, for example, if I invent something called let's call it geeky ghost right okay who wants to grow geeky ghost i sell it for 25 like bucks a, a 25 bucks a plate 
And, and then the, the guy gets it from me. He immediately plates it and does transfers and starts selling it for 25 bucks a plate. Well, you've done no work. And you actually don't know what the hell I sent you. <laughs> like, just grow it out. Grow at least yeah. once. Grow it once. And then take yeah, some and spores and you can sell those spores and then grow those spores out. And if you can isolate that successfully, then go ahead and sell plate cultures all day long. I'm not even mad at you, right? But for the sure. minute you for don't sure. do yeah. any you, work, I don't know. Yeah, if you don't do any work, I, I, I agree uh, as an unwritten rule. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're, you know, if, if we're going to have any at all um, to be just peddling things, you're just leavening culture. I mean, uh, yeah. you're, you're not really doing a whole lot. I mean, it, it takes, you know, a small amount of materials and a really, really small amount of research to be able to make up some agar plates and do a couple transfers. If you're not actually going through the work of right. running something to grain yeah. and bulk substrate and fruiting it, I, I don't think you deserve to sell culture plates a bit. Right, and hope, I mean, what I'm hoping through all this is people who start watching this and watch the ethics segment are like, oh, I like vendors who actually do the work and grow things out and have an ethic behind their work. And when they put something out, the photos that they show of that fruit are from their own grows. Yeah. That Not like, really hey, hey dude, too. <laughs> can I borrow your photo? to Because I didn't grow any of your stuff out, but can I just steal this photo and then... Yeah, that doesn't, for me, that does not work anymore. I'm, I'm over that. I do not buy from anybody who does that. If you do yeah. that, I would encourage you to stop doing that and just take that next step because all you got to do is grow it out yourself and take your own pictures like everybody else does. And it's really above reproach at that point. If I say, yeah. oh, yeah, I sell plate cultures. Oh, yeah, where'd you get it? Well, originally I got it from Ray, but, but then I grew it out. I swabbed it. I germinated some swabs, and, and I actually tweaked it a little bit. You know, my isolate, my little pheno expression that I got off my, my T-Zero plates, they, they were a little bit different, and so mine are different. But I took pictures of my own grow, and so here's what you're getting. How You can't mess with that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, awesome. that's how you should it, be it, doing it. It's only a couple more weeks' work, too, right. than what you already did. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, it kind of comes back to what we were saying before, like, like everyone's environment is different and everyone's energy is different too. So, yeah. I mean, it's gonna, I mean, things are gonna get stabilized, but at the same time, you're like, you're gonna get a little bit different right. just because of the environment and the person growing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like my ODPE look different because I give each one a kiss goodnight before I go to bed. <laughs> it's the secret. With yes. with tongue or or just just their pack? Oh no tongue! I no no <laughs> tongue, no tongue. I I try to keep it platonic with my with my mushrooms. I see, I see. Yeah. Some people like to get kinky, you know. Now now mycelium is another story. Mycelium I have tried to seduce on an occasion. Yeah, I find nice. mycelium to be to to be the sexier uh, 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 of of the morphology for sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, so on that very, like, I don't know what's bestiality for mycology. I don't know what the word is for that. But no, no one is having sex with mushrooms, guys. If you're just tuning in, we're not doing that. <laughs> not on here. them, maybe. Not here. Somewhere yes. someone is, but not here. That's for sure. <laughs> yes. You got to go over to the Mycosexuals Discord for that one. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> yes. And they're there. You can find them. Oh. Well, guys, it's been a treat. Um, I really, uh, you know, Ray, I, uh, this is, it's good to get to know you. And uh, I got to know Maya a little bit uh, from getting the, the female podcast uh, together. So now uh, everybody's got a couple podcasts you guys can watch, get to know the Medicis. If you want to connect uh, and get to know them more, reach out on Instagram. Somebody asked, are they on Facebook? They are. I think you guys are trying to to do a little bit more on Instagram, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, we do it quite a bit on Instagram. Okay. Yeah, yeah we so we're on all the Facebook grow like cultivation community right. pages and stuff okay. like that. So we have like uh, three and a half years of solid work um, yeah. on my Instagram, and then nice. uh, Maya has about a year or so worth of stuff on hers, and then 
we're always tagging each other and um, you know leading uh, followers to uh, other people's pages that we dig and that we like and promoting people that we um, enjoy interact interacting with and um, after she did um, the Ladies in My Ecology podcast with you, um, she racked up a whole bunch of followers on Instagram, and then they started coming my way, and then we just did nice huge albino chode wave spore swap giveaway on yeah. Instagram and a couple of different Facebook groups, and we both did like a follow share deal or screenshot okay. follow share deal and racked up a bunch of new uh, friends and followers and gave away like I think like 50 spore swaps so far we have another 50 spore swaps to give away this month I um, promised that we would do a good uh, three to five different giveaways and we did three so far so we've got two more giveaways that we need to give away nice. at least 25 spore swaps so be on the lookout for that on Facebook and Instagram and then um, we, um, a lot of our products are available, um, um, through us. Um, yeah. you can, um, just message us. Um, you cool. can hit the beacon that's available. Yeah. The link um, in the description will give you all the information, like our current score you menu. I actually need to update the score menu, but, um, it has like our Facebooks and Instagrams and stuff like that. Um, and then we're also currently building our own Facebook group too. So that will Sweet. be out soon for everyone to be able to. Oh, yeah. the, it's going to be Medici Mycology. It's going to be a really badass group. A lot of it's going to be us promoting ourselves. But with that, we're going to be uh, doing a shit ton of giveaways on there, sharing nice. a whole bunch of our work, and then also promoting other groups. In our yeah. group, we're going to allow other group promotions. There's a lot of groups that don't allow you to promote other groups and don't allow you to uh, promote uh, people's Instagram and stuff like that. But we're going to have a little bit more relaxed um, environment and we are going to allow people to um, promote other groups and promote themselves a little bit. And then we'll have some really low key, really um, OG uh, spore vendors in there. Some of our really great cool. friends that we have um, spent a lot of time with and done projects with already. And so that's something that's really awesome that's going to be coming up here pretty soon. Yeah. All right. I well, I, I, I got to join the, I got to join the Michael OG for sure. Um, it's been a pleasure. You guys are awesome. Um, I, uh, like I said, have only been impressed by you guys for, uh, from, from day one and, and nothing has changed since. Um, thank you so so much for being on, and uh, I'm sure we'll have you guys back shortly. Thank you. Thank you very much. We hope you have a really great time talking with Edward. Um, oh, yeah. Ed's coming up, guys. Don't go anywhere. bananas to give away. <laughs> thank you, everyone who stopped by to uh, watch this live and commented and experienced this with us. We really enjoy all of your energy. Um, feel free to hit us up, message us. Let's talk cultivation. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, lo I'm looking forward to seeing your geeky ghost come out. Someday. Oh, yeah. Someday. <laughs> geeky ghost isolation coming someday. out. I, I'm, I better get a clone right away, man. You know, but damn it, no better, but nobody better sell it. I okay. won't. I'll keep it all to myself forever. <laughs> just in private. <laughs> just in just a private grow. Yes. Anyway, all right, guys. Uh, talk to you later. I, hopefully, I can find Eddie roaming the streets of Bangkok somewhere. Uh, oh shit! Yeah, no, oh, yeah. He, he he's around. I'm sure. All right. All right. All right, guys. Yeah, uh, see you later. All right, guys. Uh, sorry, I'm just doing a little housekeeping here, waiting for Ed to show up. Um, he's got to hop on. Uh, okay. Technical difficulties. Um, so anyway, guys, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the new segments. 
Um, it's a little, well, it's a lot more work, but uh, I think at the end of the day, it, it's going to allow people to, um, oh, he said he's here. Okay, Ed, if you're here, I don't see your video feed, though. Where's your video feed at? Anyway, uh, so yeah, a lot of people have been complaining. Uh, there's no timestamps. I can't do anything with this with no timestamps. What do you expect me to watch a three-hour podcast just about mushrooms? Yes, I do. But um, if you don't want to, I am working on the timestamps. Uh, hopefully, we can get that going. Um, and, and the segments are going to make it at least a little bit easier. Like, okay, in 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, uh, you know, compartmentalize uh, some topics a little bit. Anyway, I killed enough time, guys. Guess who's here? The one. The only. Well, first, what time is it? It's deep science time. It is deep science time. What's up, dude? Hey, how's it going, man? Can you hear me? Yep. I just oh, told okay. everybody I said he's probably riding through the rain on his motorcycle in the streets of Bangkok, Thailand, avoiding getting karate chopped by ninja warriors oh, or just buying bananas. bananas. <laughs> I got my big All right. lighters, too. Okay, but well, you can... You can throw those big lighters out. You don't need those anymore. <laughs> I know. I'm so conflicted. Ah, I don't know what to uh, do. <laughs> the just, tribalism thing. But, of course, your bananas, you, what What the hell bananas do you have? What are those? Those are like dude, they, high bananas? They, yeah, they sell like 20 different kinds of bananas here, dude. Some are like this big. Some are oh. like, uh, like Ron Jeremy size. Like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> some are you, like I, nice. I, I, I. Don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, no, I don't even. I have no idea just, who that is. It's a random, random name, Jenna no Jameson. Clue. I don't, I don't know her. No, either. I don't know how big her banana is either. Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, <clears throat> yeah, I guess they they take bananas more seriously here. It's just whatever United yeah. Fruit Company makes. That's all we oh, get. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and they're we fresh, man. That. Like, like I literally bought. You have to eat them. You were talking about banana bread, like. Those I just bought last night, and they're already overripe because wow. they pick them right off the tree, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, they're not... Well, they're growing them down the frickin' street, right? Yeah. I mean, well, they grow them yeah. there. Literally. Yeah. In my front yard, I have, like, three banana trees. Like, wow. <laughs> so people steal them is the problem. Yeah. So they gotta... Luckily, my uh, my little farm, they don't, they don't see that stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's what you don't want them to steal. Yeah, yeah. I gotta hide the weed plants and the, and the other stuff. You do. I talked to a guy today who uh, he he grows his weed and his mushrooms together. So uh, I mm. think we're gonna. I know. I knew you would tisk tisk that. I'm gonna bad bring idea. him on. I'm gonna bad find out what he does. But bad he idea. he <laughs> okay. unless you have a complete. Right. That's why I just, I just put the bananas out in the hallway because I don't want them near anywhere like right. there's bugs on them, mites. I had a right. I had a horrible mite problem that was pretty much provoked by i actually don't have any weed anymore i destroyed all the plants because i'm like eh, the roi is not really working out here you know the, sure i uh, like mites and uh substrate contamination i just got rid right. of all the plants i there are some people that can do the the plant fungus thing but i'm apparently not one of them and i have that's fine good results man that's fine you don't have to be that all right so let but, me pull up i, I buy, think let me just get, I'm like paranoid about the bananas now. Let me get them back in the fridge. <laughs> I'm a little bit paranoid. I really like, dude, it took me like three months to get rid of the mites. And it was such a nightmare. Like, okay, I got my, I got my core. Is the sound okay for everybody else? Like, we're no, I, no I think thing. you fixed whatever happened last time. It has been fixed. Yes. Okay. All right. So guys, uh, just a quick uh, introduction. We uh, were definitely racking our brains of where to start on this, uh, you, you know, molecular DNA, fungal, uh, genomic, blah, 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 blah. We didn't know where to start because unlike being just a professor at a university where you're like, okay, I'm teaching the 101, uh, you know, chemistry class. And then when they're done with that, I'll teach them the organic chemistry class. And, you know, you have a curriculum and it steps its way up. 
we got a lot of people at different places, so we thought it would be wise to do a video that sort of went over some foundational concepts. Try to give people who, you know, literally graduated high school 30 years ago and do not remember any science at all, give you guys a chance to sort of catch up. The guys who, you know, have, uh, you know, chemistry degrees, you guys are going to probably be slightly bored, but hopefully not too bored. Um, but, but the goal here in this first presentation is to just quickly give people some information uh, as it pertains particularly to Cubensis and an understanding of, of uh, some of the concepts they're going to have to have and you're going to want to do some independent research on so you can keep up as, as we're sort of move, moving through some of this stuff. Does that sound about right, Ed? Okay. Yep. All right. So uh, I'm going to pull the slide up. Ed did uh, most of the work. I just made it pretty. Um, Ed saw it the other day. He said, well, it's so pretty. I, I don't know what you want me to say now. But, you know, yeah, we, we like hearing you talk, Ed. So we'll, we'll let you do some talking. Okay. All right. So let me pull this overlay off. That's not going to be needed right now. Okay. All right. So biotechnology. Um, I am in the process of learning how to, you know, do some DNA barcoding to identify the species, and uh, I uh, plan on doing some content related to that. Um, was hoping to get uh, Alan Rockefeller on to talk a little bit about that. Hopefully one day I can still make that dream come true. Um, for now, we're going to just move through uh, this first presentation on uh, fungal DNA here. All right, okay. take, take it away, Ed. Okay, so this is a little different because I'm normally the one operating the slides, and I, I'm pretty chaotic uh, with with my uh, PowerPoint. I've been doing this for a while, so hopefully this. Is Shoot, man, I, I should have sent it to you, and you could. Uh, we, next time, I'll send it to you. You upload it. I think this will be okay. I think it'll work. All right. Um, so yeah, like, like Mike Ogiki was saying there, we we don't want to like lose anybody. I don't want to lose anybody. In fact, the whole purpose of this is to be a more inclusive. Because I do frequently get the comments of like, oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> I, I, you guys, can you stop saying that? Nobody's stupid. <laughs> right. Um, like it, when, when you uh, kind of, what is that, self-degradating, what do they call it, deprecating? Self-deprecation, um, yeah, yeah, sure. So it, it's kind of not really productive. So if you're going to come at this, you got to come at it with the idea that you're, you're coming to learn something. And don't mm -hmm. just say like, like when I, I tell people I teach chemistry, um, like the first thing they inevitably say to me is I hate chemistry <laughs> so if you come into it with that kind of attitude like it's not really the best way to learn stuff because sure. it'd be like you know you're already putting up a wall um, and so like what we're doing I mean at the end of the day we're growing mushrooms right so like yeah. we don't need to be like super duper serious like Raymond was saying you know about like this kind of like uh, oh it's mine it's like th this belongs to everybody you know like, right. it's we're growing mushrooms here it's right. not, I mean hey, I understand and your, can you move your little, the little mouth part just a little closer to your mouth? Yep. There we go. Like cool. that. Nice. Juicy. Oh. Okay, cool. Velvety. Now I feel like, a, like a air traffic. I got my little spit guard on there. What do they call it? A pop filter? It's so, all good. So, okay, cool. Um, so, let's see. Uh, single spores. Gosh, you know, these are like some definitions, I guess. Uh, a single spore is going to germinate into what we call haploid monokaryotic mycelium. Uh, this is a little bit tricky when you start talking about other fungi besides cubes because they can have multinucleate spores and then the, the, the kind of Caprinus uh, thing, people start getting into that. They've used Caprinus cinereus like for a lot of um, older genetics work and that, that's not what we're dealing with, you guys. Try not to get too much into the, like, the weird stuff. Right. Like, cubes, cubes are basic basidiomycete fungi. They're, they're not, like, anything fancy. They're not mutated versions of, of Caprinus that's been hit with UV or EMS or some kind of mutagenic. We're just dealing with normal mushrooms. They have haploid spores. They form dicaryons, and then they undergo meiosis to form spores. Uh, well, they, they go karyogamy, and, and you guys all know all that stuff. Yeah. Um, again, I don't want to go into, like, the super-duper, like, I don't want to bust out any, like, biology textbook, you know, stuff. diagrams. Like, yeah, that that turns people off. And you can learn that from a book. 
um, to be honest. Um, if you're really into that stuff, go look it up in a book, you know. There's, yeah. there's plenty of stuff out on there on the internet so our normal like scenario uh yeah we start with single spores however you might get them you get a monokaryotic um haploid mycelium and that is what we call a gamete in the biology world so just like a sperm is a gamete and an egg or a pollen grain um these are what we call gametes it's a fancy word for a haploid propagule um so in our case we can grow out those propagules to a plate so kind of like some of the lower organisms, like mosses and ferns, they'll have a haploid state that's like kind of big. So like when you look and you see on the ground and you see some kind of mossy stuff, that's usually also a haploid. Oh, so okay. similar to that, we can grow out our, our spores into a monokaryotic culture, which we can share and store and grow for years. Uh, I don't think there's really any sort of end to the, the propagation um, of, a, of a monoculture. I have mono, mono carrion. Okay, again, I have right, to be right. careful. A mono carrion, not a, yes. not a monoculture. That's a different topic. So this again, speaking this, I haven't really spoke these words to a lot of people. I usually write them. <laughs> um, so if I, if I misspeak again, you guys got to give me a little, a little leeway. Uh, dicarions, uh, of course, you know, those are what we're normally dealing with when we want uh, to make a new mushroom. Um, again, something weird about the, the basidiomycetes and a few of the ascomycetes. In fact, most of the ascomycetes, is, they, pers they persist in this dicaryotic state. So they can persist in the monokaryotic haploid state, but they can also persist in the, uh, the, the dicaryotic state. Again, not the diploid state, right? Because dicaryon means N plus N, so there's two haploid nuclei. And they undergo karyogamy in that final terminal cell, what we call the basidium. And that's where meiosis occurs, and that's where all the magic happens. So when and we then, have our plate, so when we have our, our dicaryon cultures, right, there's, there's two nuclei, but they're, they're not together. They're not diploid yet. They're just hanging out in that hyphae until they make a fruit and then finally go through that final process, right? Okay. Yep, exactly. That That's what probably a lot of people um, maybe kind of forget when they get, they get a little confused because they're used to thinking about diploids like humans and diploids like animals and, and that process of like meiosis kind of happens. Oh, uh, in very specialized organs. And in, in, in fungi, we, there is a specialized organ that's called a basidium. Um, but that's, uh, that's kind of like, I don't know, it happens at different parts of the life cycle. <laughs> so okay. so that, that's a little confusing for some people, I think. Um, and then if we, I mean, to keep this brief, as, as, yeah, as I kind of figured what's going to happen, I'm, I'm running off at the mouth here. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what, what we all mitochondrial DNA and um, some of the other what we would generically refer to as episomal DNA. Um, there could be viruses floating around there. there virus is something I want to discuss later on in the Discord okay. groups, you guys. We're, we're not, w w nobody really touches, <clears throat> touches on viruses, but I think they need to be discussed. <clears throat> but um, mitochondrial DNA um, and, and then the other, there might be weird plasmids floating around in there that could be derived from from eukaryotes or they could be derived from um, bacteria maybe um, I don't know that whole realm is, is, is up for grabs now um, but that would generally be referred to as epigenetics but mitochondrial DNA um, is, is a good example of that you know there's there's other copies of our ribosomals uh, as you can, as, as Michael there is, is written uh, the ribosomal protein you know all that stuff there, there could be different copies um, and that sometimes leads to ambiguity in our sequencing um, results also. Um, so we got to be a little bit careful, but again, another topic that's for another time. All right, let me move. You ready for next slide? Yeah. So I, I think the, the, core, the super core takeaway on this slide is when we say DNA, the, when it comes to our cubes, the places they are are in the spores or in the hyphae there in the, the, the nuclei, the, the two nucleuses, nucleuses? No, uh, nuclei. nuclei. Um, <laughs> it didn't feel right, man. I don't know why, but okay, I nuclei. Um, I do it all the time. I don't. And then a tiny little bit in mitochondria. 
So, so that, that's sort of the key takeaway. When we're just saying fungal DNA, this is where it is. It's in the nucleus, whether it's in the spore or it's in the nucleus within the, um, the two nuclei within the hyphae and then the mitochondria. Okay. Right, right. And just one more thing that the nuclear DNA is going to completely overwhelm the mitochondrial DNA. So if you're doing a PCR reaction and you're extracting, if you're doing a DNA extraction, the nuclear DNA is going to way, way, way overwhelm the mitochondrial DNA. So once you start to go through the technical aspects of like a PCR reaction, the, the mitochondrial DNA, unless you isolate it specifically, re requires centrifugation and a bunch of other stuff. Um, you, you don't really need to worry about the mitochondrial DNA unless you're specifically trying to look at it. So, so yeah, base okay. pairs again. You got For you chemistry people, oh, I, I said I was a chemistry teacher. Again, I don't want to make it boring. If you look way, way, way back in the chapter one of your intro chemistry book, you'll see something called hydrogen bonding. Uh, hydrogen bonding is not the bond of a hydrogen to a nitrogen or the hydrogen to a carbon. It's uh, hydrogen that's electrostatically attracted to another <laughs> electronegative element like nitrogen or oxygen. So if you look at the slide, you'll see the little dash lines. Those little dash lines like between the H and the O at the top of that adenine. Those are what what we use to represent hydrogen bonding. Um, they're just like magnetic attractions. Uh, right. They're not a proper covalent bond. So this is why, uh, again, I, I don't. I got to be careful here because when you when you denature DNA, what you're doing is you're ripping apart the two strands. So when you do a PCR reaction and you heat the mixture up to 95 degrees Celsius, you are ripping apart those hydrogen bonds. Okay. So that allows the two template strands to basically anneal with the primers. So when you lower the temperature back down to 55 degrees Celsius, your primer is going to stick to one of those single strands of DNA. And then you go through the extension process, which is where the polymerase comes in. So the reason why a primer is going to anneal to a single strand of DNA is simply because of hydrogen bonding. So okay. it's like kind of matching up Lego bricks, like a certain Lego brick. You got to get it in the right position before it snaps in. And in order to do that, you have to have a primer that's complementary to that DNA sequence that you're trying to amplify. Right. And that almost exclusively is dictated by hydrogen bonds, which in turn is dictated by the base pair sequence. So when we sure. say a DNA sequence, we're, we're kind of inherently kind of, uh, where they say like tacitly referring to where they, they hydrogen bond with each other. And this has many, many other implications. Uh, why water molecules are, are sphere, or why water forms like spheres, you know, droplets. Okay, sure. All that chemistry stuff that people, that like people hate. So it's say, so the hydrogen bonding, it's, uh, if I remember correctly from chemistry, the, it's sort of sharing that electron, right? No. 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 It's an but it's a that It's a loose no. bond, right? No, it's not a bond. It's an electrostatic attraction. Oh, so they're not actually bonded. So saying hydro the oh. hydrogen bonding, it's not bonded. It's just sort of, it's like a magnet holding that position. Exactly. Okay. So two okay. magnets don't need to be touching. There's no physical right. contact. A covalent okay. bond is a sharing of electrons, and even when you have ionic bonds where they completely get ripped off, right. this is not. This is why people in intro chemistry they don't nev they never quite understand it. And I talk to fourth year bio students that still don't understand this. It's not a bond. Unfortunately, we don't have a better word and a better I term see. than hydrogen bonding. It's not a bond. It's an electrostatic attraction, and that's why we put dots there. If you think about it as a covalent, covalent bonds are hundreds of times stronger. So if you were to try okay. to rip the hydrogen off of that nitrogen, it would take a lot of energy. Whereas I that, see. that like, like electrostatic, it's kind of like static, you know, like when you mm -hmm. get like a shock when you put on your shirt. It's that type of weak, weak, weak. So it's like uh, static cling. It, that's ex no, that's yeah, exactly what it is. static cling. Okay. That's exactly what it is. So when you rip apart this, when you get into your PCR and, and design primers, you look for primers that are specific for Gs and Cs. Because sure. if you look at the bottom base pair, the GC, GCs have three hydrogen bonds. So okay. GCs are essentially one and a half times stronger than an AT bond. So if you're looking at primers and oh. your annealing temperatures and, and you want to know what your, your PCR parameters are, you have to consider the GC content of your primers because a GC, a high GC content will be more specific for a particular reason, but it'll also, you'll have to lower your annealing temperature. 
So this. So this every is primer where... will have a series of the A T C Gs, but you're saying if there's more exactly. Cs and Gs, it's likely that it will take just a little more temperature or time to rip them up exactly them and so okay. we are subsequent cycles of denaturation which you normally do at 72 you know uh no no that's the the, the uh, what well, god i haven't done pcr in a long time uh 90 90 or 92 okay. is your denaturing so once you amplify your new amplicon and then you need to rip it apart again and then okay. you need to anneal again and then you need to extend it again and then you need to rip it apart again so you do that like 30 times so it's actually it's literally again a misnomer what they call melting temperature when you look at your PCR primers, and when you go to a website and you order your PCR primers, it'll you'll put your sequence in, and the web page will automatically determine what's called a T sub M. That's a melting temperature. Okay. That is that is an indirect reference to the GC content. So depending cool. on the length, okay. yeah, the length of your primer and how many Gs are in there and how many Cs and As and Ts, it does a little you know calculation which I see. you can look in a book if you want. But the the websites now do it automatically. So the melting temperature is what you need to set on your thermocycler to basically allow annealing to occur right. fast enough where you don't let, gotta let it sit there for you know 15 minutes, but also sp kind of specific enough where you don't want to get a blur. So when you look at your PCR gotcha. product on the gel, you want a nice clean line. Now, if you put, like, say, an annealing temperature of 50 and it should be, like, maybe 60, you're going to get a lot of nonspecific stuff. And so you're going to end up with mm. all these PCR products and you end up with a blur that you can still sequence because once you sequence, you're going to, again, use primers. But it's pref preferable to get a single amplicon on your gel. Right. Because it could indicate other problems like a dirty DNA extraction or problems with the electrophoresis. So when and you that, see yeah, those bands good. spread out, that's potentially a sign that your annealing temp wasn't right. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. All right, so, so, so on these base pairs, there's a lot of them. Yeah. In, in just Cubensis, 46.6 .6 million base pairs. Yeah. That's a lot. It's a right. lot. There's That's like a lot. three bit. A human's got like th over three billion. Three billion. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And but sunflowers. Still, it's a lot. So certain sunflowers have like eighty billion. Wait, what? Why so do sunflowers is, have more? Yeah. This is what's no, called. No, no, no. Don't answer that question. Don't answer that. Question. C, val okay. C value yeah. paradox. Look it up. It's on Wikipedia. Okay. C, C value paradox. Okay. All right. Well, that'll be another podcast. All right, Polyploids. So let, Polyploids. Let, let's go to so okay. MVP another, is. Another well. Yes, we will take notes. We will do another podcast. Um, so MBP <laughs> is abbreviation for millions of base pairs. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be talking about base pairs a lot when it comes to uh, sequencing. So I wanted to really make sure that, that we had a core foundational understanding. When we say base pair, we're talking about one rung on that DNA double helix that, that goes on forever. Here we go. All right. What is a gene? <laughs> So all you got to well, answer for us, Ed. What okay, is Okay, okay. We're at, we're at thirty minutes. This happens all the time, man. I, I I'll I'll do like a we're five. We're good. We're slide. halfway done, dude. We're doing great. Oh, are we? I think we're on the yeah, third slide. Fine. Okay. Um, a gene is basically a, another kind of generic colloquial term for something that does a functional. At the end, it does something. Um. So so when we get into evolutionary biology and all these like. Uh, these, we use ITS, LSU, SSU. We have to pick a gene based on like what level of taxonomy we want to go at. So the, the example that we've used a couple times is hemoglobin. If you have a mutation in your hemoglobin gene, you're dead, right? That's going to be a fatal mutation. So in a prezygotic state or even a zygotic state, if there's some mutation in your gene for hemoglobin, you're never going to be born, right? It's just okay, simple right. as that. Very, very important. And if you develop a mutation later, you're going to die, right? <laughs> um, so those kind of things, if you're looking at, say, the difference between giraffes and humans and toads or something, that kind of level of, like, conservation, which is another term we'll, we'll introduce, that, that's good because you don't want it to change so much that you can't see anything happening. Um, you know, it'd be just too random. But now when we get down to the other end where we're talking about ITS, and, and that's not really a gene. So it's got 
components of the ribosome and it's got parts that we might consider genes but yeah. the the key thing with ITS is that it has what we would consider basically introns and exons and so there's parts that would be part of the ribosomal DNA machinery and the whole ribosomal complex which is what basically makes proteins right. um, yeah. so you you can get this kind of like you do you get two for one kind of thing where you've get you get a genus level and a specific level like a species level um, sort of ability uh, in one little DNA amplicon so you can look at your ITS1 your 5.8s and your ITS2 and then maybe even a little bit on the sides depending on your primers um, and the technique and you can like see lots of cool stuff um, from so just, just like a single. Just, just guys, so you know, he's talking about uh, the the top here. This is just a graphic representing this region of the DNA, um, mm. and, and we're we're gonna get to why ITS matters and and all that in, in a lot more in the next podcast. Ed has also just done a video on his uh, YouTube channel that gets into this a little bit. We're gonna go into a little more detail, but I just want to make sure everybody knew when he says SSU, that's the far far left. It's a very conserved region. LSU on the right almost as conserved. And then in the middle is all the, the ITS stuff, and there's parts of ITS. Okay, now let, let me go back here. So a, a gene is basically just a term that means a functional section of DNA. Like it makes yeah. my, my eyes green, it makes me tall, it, it makes me hairy, just different or it makes me um, no 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 oh, no am i no. doing What's that you 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 go oh. yeah uh the the genes don't make you tall okay. genes can can make you tall but if you didn't have enough milk when you were younger you'd be short sure 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 that's my okay. problem okay. so we don't want to confuse this you guys again that's a i'm glad you said that because this cool. is the very very important nature versus nurture right. your, your genes give you the ability uh, to do something, but if you are undernourished, malnourished, don't have the right vitamins, uh, even eye color, like according to my mom, I had blue color eyes when I was born, which is common for, for babies, white yeah. babies to have like blue eyes and blonde hair. I obviously don't now, as she used to say, my eyes are full yeah. of shit now, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that the, the, the nature part is what people say, the genes. So even if you have like a cube that has the potential to get a foot high, if you don't give it the right substrate and it enough water, right. it's not going to get that high, right? And so environmental yeah. things too, you know, if you have, a, again, a, 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 an isolate that has a, a great potential for somebody else. And then, you know, everybody knows, you know, you get a clone a ISO from somebody and it doesn't do what you see in the pictures as advertised or whatever. It might just because you you messed it up. <laughs> you know? Exactly right. Like, like I've got some um, things now that I thought were going to get like this big and they're like this big, you know, and I know I messed up. I put too much azomite in there. Right. <laughs> I went too much FAFO over the holidays. Right. The, okay, so that is an important distinction. It gives you the ability to, but there are other factors at play, so yes. Yeah, environmental faculty. And also, this is why I was talking about the genetic, the epigenetics with the viruses and, and things. I think just like human, vi like herpes virus, viruses will lay dormant in cultures just like they do humans, and when there's stress, they pop out. So if you have oh. like many, many people have said, you know, these these crazy grows that like, you know, everybody's like, oh, they're a little bit bacterial and they're like, F it, I'm going to grow it anyway. That's when you'll start getting the viruses and these weird things expressing themselves. Oh. And they're kind of fascinating because just like, I mean, herpes, you know, you're 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 going on that like new date, you know, when you're a little stressed out about it, and all of a sudden you get like, a, I don't thank God, but. I, I, you get like a herpes sore, you know, right before. Thanks the big for clarifying thing. that for me. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that. I don't kiss random mushrooms, you freak. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. So, so a gene Maybe. does a specific Maybe. thing. Okay. Now, what is a genome? <laughs> a genome is all of this stuff together. All the stuff like, that makes yep. me me, right? Yep, exactly. Okay. And again, that okay. is come that comes directly from your parents. Uh, right. Like 
There is no two ways about it unless you've been infected by a bunch of viruses that retroactively change your DNA, which there there are there are some. Um, uh, there's a good a good book called Virolution actually that goes into it. Uh, yeah, but, I'm like yeah, four chapters in. It's a good book. Yeah, it's it's an interesting theory. Um, Su- but yeah, super so the genome is is all the stuff. So every right, every single it. cell has like every part of the genome in it. Except right. for the sex cells under they've undergone meiosis and then they're halved. Okay. Um, and that's a that's a whole different topic too. All right. So let's talk about what you might mean by conserved regions of DNA. Yes, that's a very good distinction. So what we call conserved and and I guess non-conserved or variable. Um, if you're looking at higher taxonomic levels, let's say genus or family or order, you wanna you want to use something that's more conserved and this is very practical because you can need to align it so just like in the its region we have the 5.8 s s stands for sedimentation velocity by the way that's where the s comes from it means the chunk that when you centrifuge something in a in a it'll fall down at a certain rate so those 18 s 28 s 5.8 s and you'll see different numbers in bacteria oh those are weights Yes, so 16S SSU and bacteria, that's because the sedimentation rate. When you put it in a tube and you spin it around in a centrifuge at like 40,000 RPM, they sediment and they'll make lines. And so just like Ah. your your electrophoretic gels, you'll you'll have sometimes a reference standard on the side, a a Mm -hmm. ladder. Right. Um, that's just a reference to it's called sedimentation velocity. Okay. Um, so those numbers, if you see like 16 S when they're talking about bacteria, that's because bacteria are different than eukaryotes. Right. Most eukaryotes, the ribosomal units are, are very, very similar in size. So 18 S is for eukaryotes and you'll okay. see other things in bacteria if that confuses anybody. So something like you said, the 18 S and the 28 S, they're very conserved. Because the large subunit and small subunit, in case you guys haven't caught on yet, those are parts of the ribosome. So the ribosome is what okay. converts messenger RNA into proteins. So it's a process called translation. And if you don't do that right, you are dead. <laughs> right? right? So if you get if you get a mutation in your ribosomal RNA, DNA, whatever you want to call it, it's it's DNA, but it turns into RNA, um, and it becomes part of this giant blob thing that's called a ribosome. Um, If that breaks, that's like you turned off the power at the factory. You know, all the factory, like, you know, good old Henry Ford, his little assembly line. If one of the parts of that assembly line breaks, the whole thing breaks. So if you have a change in a conserved region like large subunit or LSU in your ribosome, that's a very, very, very significant event. Um, And that only is going to happen like maybe once every, you know, 50 million years. So if you're looking at, say, for instance, you know, when primates and, and Homo sapiens it diverged, you know, that let's just say 100,000 years ago, you can see differences. So 50 million, that was a bit of an over-exaggeration. But let's say 50,000 or, or 10,000. Okay. Every, every five or 10,000 years, you get a change in the LSU, and that's going to be really, really significant. Whereas ITS, I, I hate to bring up that, you know, the N-word, but natalensis. <laughs> Uh, Natalensis is probably different from other cubes is because it's way the heck down there on the tip of South Africa, which has been right. isolated for a very long time. So the ITS region has had time to mutate. And so those mutations, six in, a, uh, in 800 bases or whatever it is, two and a half percent, it's not really that significant because it's in a right. region that's variable. Now, if that two and a half percent was in the LSU or the SSU, 100 percent new species. 100%, no doubt about it. Right. But if it's in something like a variable region, like the ITS-1 and ITS-2, again, you're not going to... If you look in the, in the ITS sequences that have been published, look in that 5.8S region, which is a conserved part of the ITS, they'll okay. be 100%, 100% identical. All cubes, all... To be honest, probably even some of the other things that are like the Zapotec, Zapotecorum... Um, Probably not the Mexicanas and things like that, but some of the things that are, are closely related to cubes, if you look in that 5.8S region, in the actual alignments, you will see a solid block of identical identical sequences. And hmm. then where you see the variation, so where you see those six differences in the, in the base pairs, that's in the ITS too. 
and the ITS okay. one. I, I don't remember. So you gotta have to consider. You gotta consider it's not just an ITS sequence. It's an ITS one 5.8s wow. and also an ITS two, and where the variability is in that ITS two because that is what loosely let's just call it an intron. It's something that doesn't get turned into a functional gene protein or anything like that. It does nothing. It just sits there. And I think I have this. Intron, yeah. segment of DNA which does not code for proteins and interrupts the sequence of genes. So it's like a placeholder. Yeah, exactly. It's a placeholder. Okay. As you've seen from the Virolution book, like they, there's some estimates are that like 80% of our genome, even in humans, is no function. They don't know what it does. And it's the same, obviously, with, with fungi. They have no idea... We, we can get a genome, we can sequence a whole genome, and then it's like, whoa, look, WGS. What do you do with it? Right. What the fuck do we do with it? Like, right. oh, I got to not swear. I forgot you. How are you, too? Oh, dude, we're, oh. we're two hours deep. You're good. <laughs> All right. You're good. Ray right. let a couple fly, All too. Right. So. Here's a, how about the lifestyle section of living in Thailand? No. Um, yes. We're, <laughs> we're, uh, no, I'm a good boy. Uh, but, yeah, we're, we're, um, we're looking at these like 46, what is it? Four, 46 point six megabases, million, Me, million, million bases. base base pairs. Yeah. That I don't think most people realize how many like A, G, C's and T's that are. That's a, that's that's a, a lot. Bunch. So yeah. 800 out of that is like a point zero zero something percent of the entire right. genome. So focusing on this little tiny region is is out of necessity. What we've had to do. Like we cannot, uh, even with our computers these days, you cannot compare genomes. You have to pick regions. So then we get into the SMPs, like the single nucleotide polymorphisms that we use for, you know, 23andMe to figure out your, your, your what are your pedigree or your ancestry. Uh, you just simply can't. You can't take 200 uh, cube sequences and 46 million base bases and pump them into a computer it would it's just not going to work the, and then what it doesn't know what to do with it anyway right exactly what do you do with that's it? like that's like five other episodes when you right. get to the software like omega which is the freely available like uh i think it's on its 11th version now uh some people call it mega 10 uh, omega x mega 10 you know the roman numeral i don't mm -hmm. know what people call it it's different now it's on 11 so they've avoided any ambiguity um, the, the, when you go to the pull-down menus in that program, you're looking at like, oh, gee, I got a DNA sequence. And then you go pull some off a of GenBank, and then you're like, I got 50 DNA, se DNA sequences. And then you got to align them. And then you got to right. tell it. And, and we didn't even – we're not even getting into things like transitions, transversions, mm -hmm. like yeah. when it – G, and then a, and then it reverts, and then possibly things like codon positions. When you start talking about exons, there's a degenerate – code for amino acids in a protein and the first position is very very important the second and third not so important it's what we call degeneracy so okay. if you look at a pr protein sequence and you see a lysine there's six codons for lysine and if you get an agg i don't remember what they are but if you get an agg a agc a agt aga they're all lysine and remember, in evolution and natural selection, like the only thing that's going to be selected for is basically what we would call phenotypic characters. Okay. So what your hair color, your eye color, if you're camouflaged and you survive better, like that's a phenotype. And right. that came from a protein. But again, you're back to the, the genotype and the environmental conditions and all of that kind right. of stuff. But natural selection is not what we do in the cube world right no we, are we very, do the opposite very, uh, <laughs> we yes. almost do the opposite exactly. we give you you know the gucci substrate we give you the distilled water yes we <laughs> i mean and and when I, I talk about throwing mpg plus in the mix <laughs> people go why would you do that that's i know man right I'm but out in the wild it's just like toxic chemicals <laughs> seeping through the rocks yeah, all, exactly. i mean it's a it's a wild world out there that Is all these fungi yeah hot sun yes and yet <laughs> maybe somehow, a little bit of water horse poop and hot sun and some half digested straw yeah yeah i'm looking at my bottle of like azomite and erythmic erythritol and i'm like man these high so mushrooms they eat better than me why am i, I buying <laughs> right. 
I'm buying their food, and meanwhile, I'm at 7-Eleven buying hot dogs on a stick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's all. They've taken over my house. They've taken over my fridge. <laughs> yep. My electric bill. <laughs> oh, dude. I got some guys on the Discord talking about buying autoclaves and stuff like that, and then they start talking oh. about what they're built, or bubble barrels. Talking about what their bill, their yeah. electric bills look like, and all that, and I'm just like, uh, yeah, it gets expensive asked, real fast. Yeah, I asked somebody I wanted to get for my New Year's a 75x, you know, all American. They yeah. sell them here, but they're about a, about twelve hundred dollars, I think, maybe maybe even more. And I asked somebody about the electric bill, and they didn't they didn't know, but I imagine it's uh it's the electric stereo clave version, you know, with all the right. fancy dials yeah. and stuff yeah. at the bottom. I got a couple pressure cookies that cost me like 50 bucks here, but that's, right. uh, I don't know, maybe maybe not quite yet. I'm a little bit worried about the electric. Gas is cheaper for me, so I'm, oh, I'm good with gas. Here it's way cheap, man. I get like yeah. huge propane tanks for like 10 bucks. Yeah, yeah, gas is cheap. All right, so where were we? 7-Eleven. Okay, variable regions. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me let me check. Uh, okay, so we've we've talked a lot about the the uh, SSU, LSA, and ITS. Now that I'm looking at the slide, I wish I would have arranged it in the actual order that your graphic was in. But but basically, the idea that s different regions you can actually run DNA. So if all I wanted to do was identify something to a family in a genus, I could just use the LSA region. That would do that for me. If I want to go higher uh, up... Oh, I just know LSU, LSU. Oh, I, and a type... That's that's from my University of Michigan days right there, dude. That's, that's from morning... Oh, yeah, deliver, yeah, exactly. I remember that's, the LSA where, building. I used to deliver library from. books there. Uh, but Sorry, LSA is I'll also lysergic acid uh, um, amide, the stuff in uh, morning glory seeds. That is not what I meant here. I meant That's LSA. That's a Freud, Freudian apology. slip, man. Yeah. But yeah, I remember the LSA building. There was always yeah. like cute girls over there. <laughs> there no short supply of that. So, so yeah, these different regions, this was big for me to understand, was that for cubensis, definitely for Basidium mycota, for basically fungi that make mushrooms, um, it's been pretty much established at this point that the SSU region is extremely conserved it will identify phylum class order family lsu not lsa my bad a little bit more variation but will identify the family and genus which gets us really close really close to species level but that the its is uh is where we're going to be able to identify the species not necessarily below species so that, yeah. that region here. So SSU on the left in red, and it even says on the bottom here, evolve slowly, so useful for higher level, and then the LSU on the right. Now, I have read a couple of these novel species papers, and it seems like they tend to do all of the above. They, they, they do SSU, LSU, ITS, they even do like some other ribosomal regions, but they're, they're trying to, it seems like they're doing a set just to make sure that Absolutely, we, we covered all our bases. Everything seems to be yeah be jiving basically. For sure, they some they call them multi gene phylogenies. Uh, I think it's pretty common to do at least three, if not more, like six gene, regions now. Okay. So yeah, like you said, the elongation factor one alpha, the R RPB, RPB. genes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always forget it's RNA polymerase B something. Uh, and also, um, I saw some people doing that TEF, something yes, like Yes, I saw that once. And there's, a, there's other ones. People come up with new ones all the time. The idea is that if you're doing um, later work, you want to... It's kind of easy if you've got the primers and you try to... A strange practical reason, you try to design primers that will anneal at roughly the same temperature so you can do the same thermocycler right. program. Like, so that's what, that's kind of the practical reason they've designed these things uh, for the TEF and for the RPB. So you don't really have to mess with your thermocycle program right. um, so that you can do, uh, you basically get a DNA extraction and well one is ITS, well two is SSU, well three is LSU, well four is TEF, right. 
well fives rpb2 whatever it's like that's the way they do it um so you end up with this enormous amount of data that takes you like years to process <laughs> right <laughs> So then you get you're back to the conserved variable, and then you smash them all together, and hopefully, uh, so so you get what's sometimes referred to yeah, as a mult multi gene phylogeny, basically. Um, so smashing them back together is a little, and aligning them. Uh, you haven't quite got there yet, but when aligning DNA sequences is a little bit tricky, because you'll have practical things. Um, if if you're if you're sequencing from a dicarion, you can get double peaks. And then you got to pick one or the other. Uh, sometimes there's just practical issues that the, the DNA won't be as good and, and nice and clean as you would expect it to be. Okay. Uh, and you might get ambiguity in your sequence. So when you see it on GenBank, you just see ACGTs. And sometimes there's what's called an ambiguity code where you'll see like other weird things like a R or X or a G. Um, sure. That is a problem when you're doing the actual mechanics of the of the alignment as well as the the analysis of the sequences that's where it gets really deep and that's where a lot of biologists are going now um is is the the analytics kind of the the actual what they call the the systematics and the the phylogenetics is is almost like like the way things are related to each other is almost like a side note for some people they're more interested in the mathematical like analysis oh of yeah the sequence I've, data. I've... I, I've found when going through papers, some papers where I'm like, yeah, this is like for the computer science people. Yeah, I'm not exactly. even into this at all. It's too far removed from the mushroom for me. Totally. Yeah, yeah. like the one of the papers that I'm sure a lot of people have seen, 90% of the paper is, is uh, where they isolated genomic DNA from spores, for one. Uh, and two, it's like 90% of the papers about their analysis of the, the WGS paper. There's a couple right, okay. of them now. Okay, yeah. But these, like, the, it's all about their mathematical techniques and the algorithms they use for this and that. And that, that's, that's like, I don't know, it's not very interesting to me, to be honest. That's for the big pharma people. I'm with They're you. trying to pull out regions that they can patent and they can be like, this is our chromosome. Like, you can't do anything with it. Like, we own the, you know, base pair 246 to 984 and we own it. And that's what they're trying to do. And, and we're obviously not. So, about that. so we're not the only community trying to own nature. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. trying to own nature. Um, okay. But they've got like billions of dollars in patent lawyers, you know. We uh, and we don't. Yes. Ven All right. Vendors on. <laughs> so I'm. There's a dense slide. I I, I want to go over some of the. Uh, I want you to go over some of these terms here. But mm -hmm. just real quick. Um, Lately, we've been talking a lot about interspecies hybrids, um, you yeah. know, gnats cross with something else, and uh, down the road, we'll, we'll get a little more into the whole Natalensis debate once, once we get everybody kind of up to speed about some stuff. But just to begin with, I still struggle and have to sometimes pause and go, okay, right now, do I mean interspecific? Okay, interspecific, yes, across species, two different species, okay intra-specific and i came up with something the other day i think i'm really i'm really proud of myself for this so the internet is all oh, over yeah. the place right internet all over connecting multiple things but if you work for a private corporation they will have an intranet and that's the that's the yeah the network within the company so if, if you're worked in a company that had an intranet versus the internet that, that might be a quick way to, to know that when you're talking about intraspecific, you're talking within a species, interspecific, two different species, and then infraspecific, I don't e even know why I included this, to be quite honest. I, it, uh, the, nobody really uses, unless you're getting into like orchid breeding and stuff like that, people don't really use infraspecific that often. Okay, my bad. I rarely hear it. It's it. No, it's good to put it on there. But um, if people want to remember, too, just the inter and intra, like the internet example you used, that's perfect. Okay. Infra is where, like, you're talking about things like really, really specific, like orchid breeders and stuff. They've got a whole different terminology, too. I don't, I don't think people need to really worry about infra okay. that much. Okay, forget infra. Yeah. 
All right, so let's go back to this. These were some of the topics you wanted to cover. Let's uh, let's end with this, and then I'll make sure. I think I didn't put it in. I'll I'll, I'll link it. Ed's, if you guys don't know, he's got a sweet YouTube channel. Um, despite being a wealth of information, he has beat me to the YouTube Shorts game by a mile, and does all these great little short videos that like. It doesn't take a lot of time, but you definitely learn some stuff with every video you watch of his. He might or might not being, be wearing a shirt. He might or might not drop things. Oh. Um, both of those things <laughs> happen frequently. No, um, I got my big tripod. I took my big tripod. Nice. I got it out. I got two of them. I don't know why I didn't use it, but All right. Okay, so, so under the variable regions, um, these were some of the concepts you wanted to talk about. I'm going to let you go. Yeah, uh, I think most of those people can just kind of read through them. The one that stands out to me are the three at the bottom. And I, I actually want it just since, I don't know if we're running out of time, but we're good. selection we're, pressure. We're good. Okay, the three at the bottom are kind of related. And I actually wrote down something. Um, so selection pressure. So in nature, normally there's a lot of selection pressure. In our artificial growing conditions, in our tents or tubs or whatever, right. we're, we're, we're far away from that. Yes. So that last thing, what's called the Hardy-Weinberg principle, this assumes that there's all of these things that really don't apply to us. So we also we got to be a little careful that when we're, we're we're trying to apply like analogies or metaphors in like nature, they don't really apply to us. So for example, okay. let me just so no selection. So part of the Hardy-Weinberg principle, which is just a fancy name for like nature, what happens in nature? No ice, no selection. Well, that's not true for us. No mutation. That's not really true for us. Like Michael said, we're looking for mutations. No migration. Well, that's not really true either. Um, so if we do have, uh, we do have like natural conditions, things are going to migrate. Uh, and, and that's, again, we saw with the gnats example. That's, that's another topic. Large populations, again, something we violate. Uh, we select based on, right. you know, a spore print that's been sent to us. And we don't have millions of individuals or millions of tubs like like the Medicis were saying, you know, you'd fill a warehouse like I could fill a warehouse with like a spore print. Right. <laughs> like it just don't we don't have the time, the space or the well, physical capabilities to do it. Right. Uh, and I love that idea of outsourcing. I think they use the same word farming. We got to out, out farm out these kind of things. That's that's yeah. that's exactly what I think um, I'm trying to do, and what hopefully other people are trying to do. So hopefully some of y'all that got those like crosses that it made, but maybe you'll send me back a cool phenotype or isolate later on in the future, <laughs> or sell it. Who cares? Anyway, I'll make more. Uh, random mating, random mating, something again is, is something we don't do. We don't randomly mate our cubes. We very, very specifically mate them with right. each other, right? So if you go back to things like genetic drift and selection pressure, you have to take those words with a, a grain of salt or whatever they say. Uh, and, and you have to like kind of realize that don't, those don't really exist in our, our little cube world. So right. um, that's pretty much all I have to say uh, about that slide, I think, unless unless you've got a question that I, I don't want to go droning on about. No, that's good. I mean, so I think the big takeaway to super, super summarize is DNA is in nuclei and within there, they are immense. They are these huge long strands, these you know, double helixes made up of base pairs. The base pairs, uh, different regions of them have different functions. And as a cube grower, if I, or, or even just a, a wannabe field mycologist who finds mushrooms and says, hey, you know, it'd be really cool. And this is definitely happening right now, uh, thanks to guys like Alan Rockefeller, my buddy Kyle Kanan uh, down in Southern Ohio, uh, guys like these guys and uh, William Padilla Brown, uh, Michael Symbio, um, you know, they go out and do these little DNA workshops and some people it's just something to do one weekend then they go home and they go look at me, I, you know, I, 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 I ran some DNA and isn't that great and then some people take it really seriously and start submitting to iNaturalist and all this, but for us, um, 
we're hoping to eventually, once I can figure out how to, how to do all this and, and get some of the basics down, we're going to go from ITS, which for all of us, we're almost exclusively growing cubes, so DNA barcoding within the cube world would get pretty boring because we would just be finding out what we already know, which is we grow cubes. Although my dad, every time he comes over and he sees these mushrooms, he asks me the same question. He goes, but how do you know you can eat them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm yep. like, uh, <laughs> just, we, just, we know. We, we know what cubes know. look like. We've grown enough at this point. We, we can tell. Your um, dad's generation probably uh, didn't eat mushrooms that stain blue. That's probably like a full, like uh, yes. orange mushrooms and ones that stain blue. Like those are the bad ones. Yep, exactly. Look, that's why all the Polish people in Michigan had all these crazy ideas about spoons and silverware. That's my dad, dude. Coins and straight up on Polish. A tree. Yeah, yep. that's they've got all the right. They got it all figured out. We should get yep. them involved. Oh, I would love. I, I I have. I would love to get my dad involved but, with some cubes. Let me tell you. But it'd you. take a lot of them, though, wouldn't it? Like it does all the other. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> anyway. Does. So, so yeah, guys, the, the whole point of this is if anybody, because there's a lot of people that like to forage, and uh, if you want to spend maybe not quite a thousand bucks, if you're really shrewd, you can probably spend under 500 bucks. Um, you could actually be sending in, all you got to do is make sure that you've extracted the DNA, right? You can send it into a place, and for honestly not a crazy amount of money, you, you, you can get the stuff sequenced, and then you can submit it, and you can find out what the hell you got. Um, but beyond that, there's some other things that seem to be of interest to the cube community, which as we continue this journey uh, talking about fungal barcoding and all that, we'll, we'll start to uh, 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 explore a little bit more ways that we could do, you know, paternity tests, um, uh, ways to figure out if, if you've crossed something, you know, as long as you got the two parent fruits and, and, and your hopeful cross figure that out without too much effort um, and then even maybe play a little bit of a role eventually in building up a, a, a phylogenic understanding of where all these different cultigens came from and, and, and building some of that stuff up. That's like a more long-term vision. Ed's already going, how the fuck are we going to do all that? But uh, I, I, I'm optimistic. Yeah, you just um, give me a, a new idea. Yeah, I'll tell Sweet. you about it later. Sweet. All right. But anyway, it's exciting. And we're doing all this because just like the Medici's talked about, you know, you can't, you can try to do all the work yourself, but you really just can't do all the work yourself. Um, there, I think when, when it comes to mushroom genetics in our community, there's some exciting things we could do. And man, if we had 10 or 20 people as interested in this stuff as we were, it would be amazing. So we're hoping that this inspires some people to get more into this, read some more papers, watch some more YouTube videos, um, you know, maybe even grab a, a textbook somewhere, uh, you know, whether you pay for it or not, that's on you. Um, and just start learning some more stuff. Um, we, we have several channels in the Discord where we talk about some of this. We share papers. Um, of course, we still talk about potency a lot, um, but we're hoping to get into a little more sophisticated discussion about um, just just some new information that people seem to want, and, and we don't have a good way of figuring it out just yet, but hopefully we will. Right, Ed? Yeah, we, so what we're uh, doing. I hope so. I, I really... Um... I have to like this. Way, my brain is like buzzing now. I don't know, not because I ate some babies. Um, <laughs> like every time I think, I have to purposely now turn off my brain by going to talk to like people about. Right. What, I don't know what they did in the day because, and I, I, my brain is constantly every time I get on on social media or the Discord, like five new ideas, and I write yeah. them down. You guys, I'm one of those post-it like people because it gets to be so overwhelming. Uh, that like I can't uh, like I, I don't you can't see it I'm not going to show you but I've got like a, I'm one of those people with the post-its on the wall I consolidate them Ed's got that crazy you know when the moment in the movie where you discover someone's crazy because they have like 40 million pictures on the wall it's that's not that the, bad that's no nah, I don't know I have it's like tw it. it's like 20 to 30 of them but some of them are oh, about other topics too. 
That's that too bad. bad. It's work stuff. Nice. All right, guys. So uh, next week, um, I have uh, one of my favorite guys. He's super nice. Been growing mushrooms for 24 years. That's all. He grows in a lot of bags. He knows what he's doing. We're going to have white beard on. Um, Ed's going to be back. We're going to actually uh -huh. get into some of the... Um, some of the see Ed's already salivating at the, just the I dropped yeah, the name White Beard and we're ready to go. Yeah, um, I've been chatting with him a lot. Yeah, he's a nice guy. He's, yeah. he's cool. Um, so he's he, I think it's called Sailing the Seven Seas of Mycology with White Beard. Uh, it's going to be a good one, and uh, we're gonna you know keep talking about ethics. We're gonna keep uh, hopefully. Um, I actually don't have anybody for the behind the veil for next week. I'm going to keep scrambling. I usually pull it together. Um, and then Ed's going to be back, and we're going to actually get into uh, some of the specifics about how you identify mushrooms to species um, and just continue this conversation, link some of the, the articles that would be like kind of a foundational article of understanding to have. And then eventually we'll be moving into what gear you need, how you do it, what the process is and I'm hoping as I go through this process myself it's going to give me some of the tricks of the trade and so, some ways of thinking about things so you guys are going to watch me learn uh, you know in real time so to speak so yeah I'm really can I, I'm really looking yeah. forward to that because you got I I've done like thousands of PCRs and I know it's a pain if you think getting your substrate in your your FAE correct right. is a problem wait till you start doing pcr reactions right <laughs> yeah. it's easy yeah. in theory but there's a lot of little twicks tweaks yeah it's uh what i've noticed <sighs> just being in a couple of the facebook groups it's like as long as it's going great it's great and then if yeah. something isn't quite exactly. lining up then you need help and yeah. so hopefully uh we'll, we'll get that help that we need so yeah and we'll learn together great. And then we'll yep. hopefully have some real, some real data to pull up and show you real-world scenarios. And it, it, I, I'm hoping it'll give people a sense of like, is this for me? Is this not for me? If it's not for you, you can keep watching. You'll still learn something. Uh, you'll probably be able to make smarter comments on on uh, Facebook posts. You know, from even if you don't want to do it, you'll you'll still get a better understanding of what's involved. And if it does excite you, you go, holy crap! I think he, he's got me. Buying a freaking thermocycler off eBay now. What well, what am I getting myself into? Well, then join the club. I got all sorts of gear down there ready to go, and yeah. we're, we're we're gonna get into it. So somebody needs to figure out how to make like a coffee machine into a thermocycler or something. Uh they did. It's like called Bento PCR. They made a little box. They've already made it, man. It's it's, oh, okay. it's overpriced, and everybody says it's not quite ideal. But if you were just trying to demonstrate the concept, you know, out somewhere, it, it's it's good. But but I was like, nope. Everybody said it. Centrifuge is not quite right. Electrophoresis machine is not not quite good enough. Yeah. So I'm like, ah, I'm just gonna just gonna buy some halfway it's decent. It's fairly stuff. fairly cheap to get good stuff. The thing is the yeah. quality. If it's something you're really like you said before you drop a thousand dollars, like make sure you want to get into it. Yes. So this is great. People investment. will. People learn, and I definitely think based on this, if you're just like, oh, my God, this is a snooze fest, obviously this is probably not for you. That's fine. No big deal. If you're like, already. oh, my God, these guys got me. I, we've only dropped one viewer, dude, since we started. We're doing great. Oh, nice. It's all good. Everybody's okay. listening. I'll take my shirt off next time. There you go. That's that's all it'll take. <laughs> Look at those substrate guns. <laughs> Dude, that uh, was me. Can I show a nip? That was me pouring agar last night. I was like, "Yeah, get the flax." <laughs> <laughs> My friends the other day, they were like, "Why are your forearms so big?" I'm looking like pouring agar, here, dude. Squeezing <laughs> substrate, like, "Yeah, field capacity, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> Taking out my anger on my uh, fucking car. <laughs> yeah, take that! <laughs> like Vin Diesel or something. <laughs> Throwing tubs around. Fuck you, I'll wash you later. <laughs> I'm too tired to wash you. Oh my okay. god. Okay, I need to stop. Nope. Alright, Kaz, I definitely look more like Burt Kreischer than Ed does. <laughs> but I like where your head's at. 
Oh my god. All right, guys, for all you who stuck in there, you got a little treat at the end. A little wild and crazy. It's, you know, it's like uh, when you were a teenager, you were at a sleepover and it got turned 2, 2 a.m. and then everybody just got ridiculous. Yeah. That's where we're at. Tired. All right, guys, next week, it's going to be fun. Thanks, Ed. Um, all right, uh, Ben. I'll for, see you for guys. This journey. Yep, take care. All right, guys, appreciate you sticking uh, with us. We went a little long tonight. It happens. Um, next week, sailing the seven seas of mycology with Whitebeard, uh, one of my good friends, uh, and he knows what he's doing, so we're going to take a listen to what he's all about. He also just started a YouTube channel as well, so uh, it's going to be a good time, and, and we're going to keep doing the DNA nerdy stuff, so stay tuned. Oh, like, comment, subscribe. I, sorry, everybody gives me a hard time about this. I mean, if, if you watch this and you're not subscribed, come on, man, just subscribe for me. It, 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 if you can't like it, just like it. it. It helps the algorithm. It helps other people find this uh, this content and all that. I, I really appreciate it. All right, guys. And uh, remember, I got a Patreon. Uh, pretty impressed so far with the turnout. I'm, I'm working on doing a little uh, thank you video. And I'll probably do a little title, title card at the end. Um, i really touched by how many people uh, seem to be in support of what we're trying to do here. So I appreciate it. All right. Till next week. Take care.